Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to Pool Dog Championship Arena at the Westgate Resort and Casino in Las Vegas for coverage of the APA World Championships. Our coverage, of course, brought to you by our friends at Pool Dog and our buddy Frank here. I'm your host, Jason Bowman, and I'm joined by Hall of Famer and true legend of the game, Ava Mattia Lawrence. How are you, Ava? I'm good, Jason. How are you? Should be uh, an exciting afternoon, I think, Ava. We've got the uh, the first of our six championships to be decided, and we've got uh, on tap the Ladies 8-Ball Championship. I know one of your favorite events. I love this event, obviously, for obvious reasons. We have a great league at home, a lot of ladies wanting to play, and I think that's, I think they have more fun and kind of lightness than the mix, to tell you the truth. This is where I found another area anyway, so that the ladies really go out and have a good time. And not that they can't shoot, right. mind you, sure. but just really go out and just enjoy it the way it should be. Absolutely. So before we introduce you guys to the finalists this afternoon, let's take a look at some of the rules here in the Ladies 8-Ball Championship. Uh, of course, our ladies' teams are comprised of, of only females with a maximum of five players allowed on the roster. They will choose three players from those five to compete in the match. There's a handicap limit of 13 for those three players combined. Of course, APA rules apply. Standard coaching rules also apply. And these ladies will be playing by the three-point scoring system. If you're not familiar with that, we'll use the graphic here to kind of explain. Um, if the winner shuts out their opponent, they will split. They'll get three points. Their opponent will get none. If the losing player makes it to the hill, they will split 2-1. And if the losing player wins at least one game but's not on the hill, they will split points 2 to nothing. So those are your ground rules. Some of the uh, payout information, of course, these ladies are competing, Ava, for $10,000 in prize money. So somebody's going to have a real good day today. Uh, our runner-up will take home $5,000. And, of course, you can kind of see the payouts that have already been made to the ladies finishing in, in third and, and further down in this year's tournament. So uh, let's take a look at our competitors this year. We have from Edison, New Jersey, we have the team of Manny's Angels. And from Hampton, Virginia, we have the team of Chicks Ahoy. So Manny's Angels and Chicks Ahoy, folks, I think they're about ready at the table. They have completed the lag. And I believe we were going to see from Team Chicks Ahoy, Jacqueline Riesig with the first break here. Jacqueline will be going against Sherry Hill, who is currently standing in the background there. So here we go. Good break. Good solid break there. Everything opened right up. Looks like she pocketed the 14 ball there on the break in the corner. Again, if you're just tuning in, we are here in Pool Dog Championship Arena at the Westgate in Las Vegas. Folks still coming in. Anticipate a pretty nice crowd today. Generally, we see Ava for the ladies' event. Seems like the, the ladies like to come back and watch this thing kind of culminate here in the finals. So. Should yeah, I mean, exciting. if you participated in this in particular, I mean, I would, I would definitely want to watch the finals, no question. I'm right. always impressed with the camaraderie of the ladies. It seems like that at all the events, they, they really stick together in a certain way yeah. that you don't really see in any of the other events. So very cool. All right, she's got her choices here. I kind of difficult to see here where the cue ball would go, but she needs to try to float the cue ball down. If she just makes this, she should come down perfectly. For the next ball right there. Oh, just missed it. Looks like she rolled that three ball in the corner, however, so that'll bring her opponent, Sherry Hill, to the table. Sherry, again, the team of Manny's Angels out of Edison, New Jersey. She pockets the six in the corner. Again, I think she's going to have to go for the two ball here. I think, believe that's the only ball that is even make a ball at this point. The four is going to cause us some trouble. That's the pink ball down on the rail there. Well, not my pat. No, it's not. Kind of made a mess of things there. We'll see Jacqueline again here at the table. Jacqueline and the team of Chicks Ahoy, they play out of Peninsula Billiards in Hampton, Virginia. Their league operator, Mike Ristano, they're very fond of him. We might talking to them before the match and had very nice things to say. Of course, these ladies have been here before. They actually finished ninth place last year, Ava, so we'll see how their experience kind of plays into their performance today. Peninsula Billiards. You ever been there, Peninsula Billiards? Yes, I have. have. I have, actually. I know Ava's from the, the North or South Carolina area, so over there on the East Coast. And uh, Yeah, I actually did an exhibition there. I can't remember. It's been hasn't been that long. 
probably some folks tuning in from Peninsula Billiards. I know the ladies wanted to make sure they thanked all the folks that have been following them throughout the tournament. Sherry Hill back at the table now. There she pockets the one ball in the corner. I like the pace of both of these players. You know, one thing I find with a lot of players who are skill level, you know, two, three, four, take a really long time trying to make the perfect shot, especially when the pressure is on in a tournament situation like this, and it's the worst thing you can do. You, you continue, just play to your skill level. You're not going to show up here. If you're a three, you're not going to all of a sudden start thinking or playing like a skill level six right. and coming up with these Houdini runouts. Just, just get up there. Try to get some kind of a, a flow going. Forgive yourself if you miss a ball. It's not the end of the world. And, um, and move on. Don't get in that kind of coma where you're thinking right. too much. Of course, both these ladies' skill level threes, they're racing to two. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is the Ladies' Eight Ball Championship, the first of six championships that will be decided at this year's APA World Championships. Oh, wow, nice, nice shot. shot. Pockets the 15 in the corner. Perfect position here on the 13 or the 11. It's tough for me to tell which one. Either way, it's a straight ball. She has her work cut out for her, though, the fact that the 5 is tied up with the 11 right there on the other side of the table. Good thing for her is that there's a stripe blocking the pocket, and she can use that to break open the eight if she happens to get just right on it. Right now, her main goal, though, is to try to make as many balls as she can without scratching. <laughs> just misses that side pocket there, so Jacqueline will continue here at the table. Jacqueline's Ava looks like she's played eight matches thus far here in the in the Ladies' Eight Ball Championship, so she has definitely been one of their go-to players, it appears. You know, some people are more comfortable in this in, in the tournament situation like this. So, w whether the players aren't here or choosing to play certain players, you know, the teams kind of get together and say, "Do we want to win and have to play the one that's most comfortable playing in this situation, right. or do we want everybody to play?" And some teams say, "You know what? Win or lose, I want everybody to have a chance to sure. play." And some say, "Let's play the people that can handle the pressure better." Yeah. So well, and it's hard to change things up if it's working, right? I mean, yes, it's it's, it's like a, a lineup in baseball. If it's working, you d you don't really mess with it because, you know, it's gotten you this far. So, we'll see if that holds. But again, Jacqueline doing a nice job here. I love that team name, Chicks Ahoy. Of course, Chicks -Ahoy. they're from you know the area they're from in in uh, Virginia's. Heavy military area. I know their team captain, Kathy, is actually a civilian employee for the Navy. So they're trying to show their support as best they can for our servicemen in that area. Long Men and women, shot of here. course. What I like about her game is that she plays such a, a perfect speed for the balls to have a chance to go in. This cloth is brand new. We're in Las Vegas, so the cloth is, is dry. The rails are dry. That means everything is going to slide. And, you know, hit it with some authority. Don't baby it, but just you don't have to slam the balls here because then the pocket is a lot more friendly when you hit right. it with the speed that she's hitting everything. So some work here. She's going to... I don't think she has an option, but, but to touch that two ball Looks a little like they're going to take a timeout here. I coach. believe this is Jackie Catlett taking a coach here. While we've got a moment, I want to make sure we thank the folks over at Pool Dog. Of course, we mentioned them at the beginning of the broadcast. They are our presenting sponsor, and they've got some great offers available for our viewers. You go to their website at pooldog.com slash APA champs, and they've got some different offers. And, of course, if you're here in Las Vegas and you're tuning in, you can stop by their booth, and I know they were giving away some patches and some other things and uh, so anyway some good folks always very involved in uh, billiards and of course allowing us to to bring this coverage to you in the way that we are so we're very appreciative of their support timeout is complete and this timeout made perfect sense when she was about to hit that the scary thing but if you open up that two and eight this early 
and then miss later on and get stuck up there on the other side of the table, then she would very easily give up the table to her opponent. So her coach cleverly told her, I know it's a long, tougher shot, but if you make this, you're going to have built-in position on the next ball. All you have to do is tap this in or actually come up the table a little bit. Then she can do it. I take it back. I thought that was a stripe ball there. It's still the right uh, choice because, as you can see, her opponent's not going anywhere with this two and eight on the other side of the right. table. So Sherry will come back to the table. Sherry Hill, the team of Manny's Angels. Kind of interesting. The, the ladies of Manny's Angels play out of Chestnut Inn in Edison, New Jersey, which I'm told is a 77-year-old family-owned bar. Actually, their their team captain's family is the one that owns it, so I'm sure some folks that are tuning in back at the Chestnut Inn, we appreciate them following along here. I know the ladies do as well. All right, Sherry tried to, a thin cut there, but it didn't work out, but there's no disaster yet. This is very, very tough angle on this ball on the side. I don't know how she's going to try to do that. She could also choose to obviously play a safe. Jacqueline is in much better position right now than Sherry because of that, where the 8, the 2, and the 13 are. I was talking to the ladies from Chicks Ahoy before the match. They really credited kind of their team camaraderie as the, the reason for their success thus far in the tournament. Their captain said, we are the definition of a team. So... Well, well yeah. that's interesting what just happened there. She, she tried just kind of did her a favor, right? Well, yeah, it didn't turn out too bad for her. Um, she tried a crazy thin cut down the rail there. That was a difficult shot, obviously. But she has left a shot here for Sherry. Hmm. And now we'll see what's going to happen here because shooting this 11... Jacqueline is pretty steady with, with shot making. She doesn't have to do anything. The beauty is when you don't have to make that cue ball dance to be able to get where you want to do. If you go, if you make this 11 ball, float the cue ball down, then by making the 11, if she gets just a little bit of an angle, she will automatically knock out that eight. Sherry just misses the 11 in the corner there. But it seems like she's had some long shots, and they're always at the opposite corners. You know, yeah. it seems like every shot she's taken. All right, long straight in one here for Jacqueline. See if she can. Sorry for Sherry. If she can make this. That's a tough shot. You know, got to jack up a little bit to be able to put enough low on it to stop it there. You don't want to follow that yeah. in. So tough it's shot. shot tougher. First, first game here of the match, and of course you've got now probably a lot of seventy-five to a hundred people that are that are focused on the match, at least here in the room. Obviously, several hundred of you viewing online. So there's a little bit of pressure that goes along with that, isn't there, Ava? You know a little bit something about the pressure. I do. And pressure is interesting. You've got to welcome it. You can't try to fight it and pretend it's not there. But you, it's, it's, pressure is tough. We'll see. If she can make this, and 11 is right there. Let's tap this in. She's a little worried about the cue ball. It is pretty straight. You can see it. But the pocket being so close to the ball... You don't really have to. You can cheat the pocket when it's that close to it. You don't have to hit it straight on. So, hmm. I wonder if she was trying to break those open there. She didn't really have the angle for that. Now, instead, she's got a tough way to go with this 11. Again, if you're just tuning in, you were watching the teams of Chicks Ahoy from Hampton, Virginia. They are represented here by Jacqueline, who is at the table in the red. Their opponents, Manny's Angels, they are from Edison, New Jersey. 
This is the first game of the first match of the ladies eight ball championship finals. All right, smart shot by Sherry. She has a bank shot on that too, but that's the last thing she wants to do is open that up. So pockets the seven in the side there. Lawton straight in one again. She wants to follow this down. She can play a safety on that too if she chooses to or try to make it later. Her main concern obviously is making this four ball. She's looking at the side. Only bad thing about making this in the side unless you super, super tap it slowly in is you would end up with no shot on the two. Make it in the side in the corner instead you can float up towards the two and get a shot, so should mention the ladies are playing with the the Aramith Pro TV balls, which is if you're seeing some different colors than you're used to from your standard rack of pool balls. Of course the the four ball is pink and you're seeing that near that side pocket. Well right. this is gonna be interesting. I would definitely have a referee ask for a referee to come over here if, if now she's not going to go for the two in it. Okay. Looks on the camera like she might be able to barely tap it in. Ouch. Ooh. Scratches in the side pocket. That'll give Jacqueline ball in hand. Again, this is a race to two here. It's not an easy shot for, especially for a skill level three here to, to figure out how to break those open. You would have to hit it either on an angle with some left into the rail and then come out and kind of hit it firm. Or I don't think she can go the other way with it. She would have to hit this with quite a bit of left to be able to hit it. The other option is to kind of stop it there, maybe bank the eight in the side. You know, it's difficult because in skill level three is not necessarily going to think the way a skill level six or seven is sure. going to think or a pro. But at the same time, intelligence, I mean, uh, l like education in the game doesn't mean a lot of threes and twos play safeties that are way over their skill level. Mm. But it's simply because they know they've been taught by somebody that's a better player. See that, that how the cue ball kind of died there? You needed to really yeah. hit a lot of left there and spin it in. Tough shot. And a question here about the size of the table. This is a three and a half by seven foot valley table. That's what all 300 and some odd tables that are used here at the Westgate for our tournament are. Yeah, they have the overhead is, is so well done it's a cl close where you can see it and this looks bigger because of the the wide screen so mm -hmm. it might look a little bit bigger but yeah it is a, a three and a half by seven all right we'll see here if she's going to just tap this uh-oh 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 wow oh, wow wow <laughs> heard the wow. collective gasp from that the entire room. That goes in, and she is pretty much done. Look at that. Well, she got away with the one there. She played. Uh, Nobody move. Nobody breathe. Wow. She's going to take a timeout here. This is Dina Balka, team captain for Manny's Angels. Whew. I think if you've played pool for any length of time, you've had that happen for you and against you. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of those where it's just just what it is. She's in a tough, tough spot here because of where the eight is. I mean, she can hit it, but what are you going to do with it? 
I don't even know if she can hit enough to cut it back in the other corner, and you have to. That would be a, a such a long shot to even make it. Really letting the cue ball loose too. So, wow. While well, the ladies talk it over here, I want to mention some of our other sponsors, of course, Aramith, Billiard Balls, Action Cues, Nationwide Insurance, and our friends here at the Westgate that have made our stay thus far so wonderful. Appreciate all their hard work. You can see there what a severe angle it is. You just hit what you can of the ball and, and hope for something. Oh, wow. I didn't realize she could make it in that corner. I thought she had to backwards cut it. I'm still not even sure if she could. Wow. Well, it's going to give Jacqueline a good opportunity here to secure the first win. You see her marker pocket there. Again, if you're just tuning in, this is final round coverage of the APA Ladies 8-Ball Championship. Whew. Jacqueline pockets the 8 in the corner, takes a 1-0 lead in this race to 2. She will have the break. So, Ava, did you, did you come in last night, yesterday? How long I came have you been in yesterday. Here? Did yes. you get caught in that storm last night? No, I was inside, and I oh, saw wow. the first thing was they were talking about like, the sandstorm. Crazy then, storm rolled through Vegas last night. And then 16 minutes later, they said it was flood warning. So yeah. going, that's the only place in the world where you, in, in the country anyway, yeah. where you would have that. So Pretty amazing winds and everything else. So. Yeah. But we're back to sunshine and clear skies today. So And hot. And, we, of course, we've got the pool party tonight. Yeah, huh? You going? Oh, party? yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. Of course, we had to kind of shift some things around this year. I don't mm -hmm. know if you noticed. We've because of the captain championship. Because of the new event, yeah, yeah, the team captain championships that everybody's talking about. And, of course, we're looking forward to that. I know I've talked to some of the players playing in that. They really love that format, the combination eight ball and nine ball. It's a little different than anything we've we've done and uh, seems to be very popular. So It's we'll actually fun. It's really fun. The, yeah. the, we had in our area two, two – um, playoff tournaments and people said they really really liked it so i think we're going to have some like cash tournaments in the same format people nice. really had fun with it yeah jacqueline with the break there both of her breaks she really breaks the ball as well this is a race to two jacqueline winning the first game so she is now on the hill if she were to win this game, she would take a 3 nothing lead for her team based on the three-point scoring system. Not as open of a table this time. You can see there's quite a few balls clustered in the center there. So at this point, the skill level that these two are playing at, you'd, all you want to do here is make as many balls as you can, get them off there, get them in your column. The ladies' eight ball tournament started with 256 teams. They started on Thursday, so. And they are the first of six championships to be decided here at the World Championships. And again, the TV balls are being used here, obviously, in, in with the stripes and solid being what eight ball is all about. It matters less, but the pink ball there is what's kind of near the cue ball. Yeah, that pink ball is the four ball. This is usually not what you say, see in your regular pool room or bar. Right, it's typically a purple. Yeah, yeah, purple would be four, but You're getting better. You're starting to get the whole, yeah, the whole yeah. color of the balls. That's my cheat really sheet. Come on, yeah. you know I got this cheat <laughs> sheet here. You got the cheat sheet. She pockets that four in the corner pocket. Sherry off to a good start here. That last game, she had a tough time really getting going, I think, just because of the layout of the balls and the opportunities that she had. But off to a good start here. All right. Looking a little more comfortable at the table. Now here's where it could be a stop right here. I don't see a ball. I'm not sure what she's planning on doing here. But, again, I like her style. She kind of just steps up here. Oh, look at that. Nope. No, not that quite. wasn't. It was close, but it was not going to go. 
But she has put herself in a position. Obviously, she's opened it up for Jackie. But um, her ball sitting right there in the pocket is not a bad thing. If Jacqueline makes a mistake, then Sherry is in a good spot. Jacqueline Riesig at the table here. The team of Chicks Ahoy. That's a pretty easy combination here. And again, built in position on the 15 ball, just straight in. The 11 got a little tricky. I'm not sure if it goes past that six ball. You can see the six is blocking most of the pocket there. It probably will pass, but it's made it a very difficult shot to get it by there. Jacqueline's very deliberate in her aiming. She likes to kind of square that ball up with the cue. And nice shot. Nice shot. Gets the 11 to go in that corner pocket. Leaves herself behind the 10 ball there. Both players holding up really well to the pressure. And in, in typical skill level three style, both of these players, uh, they make some good shots, but it's only, it's not like they're doing anything with the cue ball. You just right. make sure you make the ball. Yeah. Once you get into skill level four, they start playing a little bit more position. Skill level five and up is where you're starting to maybe put a little English on the ball, really thinking about patterns. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I like about these seven uh, and the three and a half by seven tables is that it lends itself that you can you don't have to get too cute with position. On a nine foot table, you better know how to control that cue ball in order to be able to run several balls. Right. But here, a lot of these shots that she is making right now, it just kind of has automatic position. So. Yeah, no harm done, though. She got away with another one here. <laughs> kind of a tough situation for Sherry. I think the eight may be in the way from, from the automatic kick here. Not automatic as far as making it, but I'm saying where right. you want to hit it to not put any English on it or anything. Here you would have to either jack up, play below the, the eight ball and jack up with some reverse to be able to come down. And I don't think that is in Sherry's bag of tricks. So she may have to try to go two rails and at least make contact with these two. It's interesting. I was looking over some of the notes. It looks like Manny's Angels actually lost in their first round here at the Ladies' Eight Ball Championship. And I was talking to them a little bit. They said that really kind of lit a fire under them and help them focus a little bit more and uh, mm -hmm. obviously they've been on quite a roll since. There has been a lot of those walking around. I've seen. I know, I could <laughs> use one of those. I, I could use one of those myself, I think. I don't know, hopefully there's still some available. I know that's been nice a pretty shot. popular. She was able to, good shot, good shot. Of course, some of our commenters talking about skill levels, as they always do, and we would remind everyone that, of course, here at our championships, every round, the scores for every player and every team are reviewed pretty thoroughly by our Handicap Review Committee. And yes. Of course, we also have several dozen observers here watching matches, so we, uh, we thoroughly vet the players that are playing and to ensure they are at their proper skill levels. It's quite a process that really goes into that, Ava. It actually starts long before these players ever get out here. 
um, in July they do handicap review in St. Louis where all the eligible teams right. are reviewed from you know whenever they've qualified or their last sessions. And, and the step before that, the, right. the local league operator will do a review as course, well. Of course, of course, yeah. When players are playing well, I mean, there goes a lot. A lot goes into it. There are multiple no. levels of review that that go into skill level. Yeah. So. And uh, everybody has good days. Everybody has bad days. Sometimes you say, "How the heck did this team make the finals?" Sure. And the next time you go, they're sandbaggers because they're <laughs> playing so good. So, I, I hear it all the time. It's pretty amusing to me. So, it's usually when you're seeing the player play that you're not familiar with. Yeah. So if it's a division that or a player that you've never seen somebody play, then all of a sudden everybody goes crazy. But if somebody that you have seen play before plays well, that's okay because right. you, you know they're correctly handicapped. So it's it's a it's a job. It's a tricky thing. I have a good friend of mine at work that's kind of high up in the in the amateur golf world, and they have the same situations there. You know, you just gotta keep on trucking. main thing is that people all through the year keep scoring correctly. Yeah, particularly when it comes, I, you know, what I see is, is sometimes the biggest issue is the lack of marking, properly marking the defensive shots. Yeah, everything, yeah, Right, and, and, and a lot of times that, that can lead to issues. So make sure that you're marking defensive shots. And always remembering a defensive shot is not necessarily a safety. It's, it's, it's either offense or it's defense. And if there's exactly. no intent to pocket a ball, then it is defense. The... Um, Michelle Stanley asked if this was the team event, and it is. So this is the first match of three. Correct, yeah. Um, two, uh, first to two wins and matches win the 10,000. Will be based on the, the point total with the, f with the scores, yeah. Oh, yeah, not two, not two out of three. You're right. Three I'm point sorry. scoring. That's, that's three point scoring. I apologize. Love that three-point scoring, too. I love it, love yeah. it, love it. I remember when we implemented that, I thought it was, I wasn't sure. I thought, man, are we, how are we going to do that? To me, it was like Coke, going to new Coke. But, uh, you know, sometimes I'm wrong, and that was one of those times. It has been incredibly right. popular. Making matches uh, get closer to um, the full extent of their races and things like that. So, been very popular. No, I really like it. And in a match like this, too, a 3-0 win here or a 2-1 to one win is a huge difference or could be a huge difference sure. in the overall Yeah, especially match. with three matches, just three matches, that's big. So even if you lose, if, if you can grab one point or stop them from getting the point, that's, that could turn out to be a big deal. So, All right, she's going to this 10 ball, and if she makes this and just floats down, she might be able to make that 13 in the side pocket. Again, it would be a natural position. You don't have to do anything. Nice shot. Pockets the 10 in the corner. And this is a big shot. It's a tricky angle, a little bit more so than it, you can that it looks from, from this camera angle. But the... Pockets on, on Valley Table is usually pretty f forgiving. It's a side pockets in particular, so she's going to go ahead and shoot this in here. And the question is, does the 8 go past the 7? It looks like it does. Yeah, it does. A lot of pressure on this, though. If she misses this, she's going to leave Sherry an easy, sh fairly easy shot on the 7. Her pin drop in here. Oh, nice shot. Pockets the 15 in the side. And she has some work to do. Now shooting on the eight ball, and that would be for the first match and a 3 0 lead. So. This is one of those that if this was nine ball, you would go ahead and really just and hit this eight ball with authority and make sure you, you plan where the cue ball is going to go, but just really make sure that you hit it with some authority. But being, a ni uh, being eight ball now instead of nine ball, you want to make sure if you do miss the eight that it ha stays right there right. in front of the pocket. Yep. So I have a feeling it's just kind of kind of lag this in. The one thing, the absolute last thing you need to do here, though, is to brush 
that seven. She wants to make sure, obviously, to make it, but if she misses it, you don't want to hit that seven ball. Look at her pocket marker there. That's pretty cool. You see the Chicks Ahoy pocket marker there on the, mm -hmm. on the bottom? <laughs> yeah, it's good. So much enthusiasm in the ladies' division. They get very into the team names and the shirts. and the. I think you're going to see it here if she makes that eight ball. No. Oof. All right. <laughs> Nothing right. to hang your head about. She's been playing really well. She missed one shot. And we'll see if Sherry can take advantage. Oh, Sherry cannot pocket the seven ball on that is likely going to be a critical error. Yeah, she left a really good shot here, obviously. Yeah. Huh? You can see the she's smiling, but that's uh, that's a lot of frustration, I'm sure. So again, we talked about, you know, she ran, what, three or four balls to start the rack and, and then missed a very makeable shot. So you can see, you know, for those that say, that's no skill level three. <laughs> no. Did you see that last shot? No, no, no. So Jack with an opportunity. But the one thing, though, is the pressure that no everybody forgets yeah, about. Yeah, absolutely. This is the dream shot to have, obviously, when you're feeling that pressure to take the win. A 3-0 win. win. Big win there by Jacqueline and the team of Chicks Ahoy. They will now take a 3-0 lead. And while we've got a few moments, we're going to hear a quick word from our friends at Pool dog. Tired of the same old, same old when you're buying billiard supplies? Come shop with the big dogs at PoolDog.com. You want pool cues? We've got over 700. Balls, cases, accessories, no problem. Want help with your game? How does hundreds of free training articles sound? Want to shop offline? We'll mail you a free catalog. Hit us up online, PoolDog.com, or call 866 843-3294. You don't have to play like a pro to enjoy the game I love. If you've ever played in a friend's basement, you can compete in an APA league. In the APA, everyone can play and anyone can win. So if you're looking for a fun night out with your friends and family, join an APA pool league today. Have fun, meet people, play pool. Visit PoolPlayers.com today. We come from all walks of life. Different backgrounds different abilities. We all have different reasons for doing what we do, but we're all one. One love. One passion. One big family. We are. We are. Our American pool players. And American pool players. American pool players. And this is our league. So we are back here at Pool Dog Championship Arena at the Westgate Resort and Casino in Las Vegas where the ladies' eight ball championship is underway. You can see players lagging here. We have from the team of Manny's Angels, we've got team captain Dina Balka. And for the team of Chicks Ahoy, we have Jackie Catlett. So... Dina and Jackie. We got two Jackies, right? Got two Jackies. Two Jackies. It's Jacqueline and a Jackie. Okay. So we got Jackie. I hope I don't get yelled at. If yeah. I, I kept calling Jacqueline Jackie so half the time. Kind so. of interesting, and, and you can kind of, you'll probably see this throughout the match, but Jackie, seven months 
pregnant, they tell me, Ava. So I know it. I just can't imagine being out here seven months pregnant, uh, you know, with everything that goes on with the walking and the distance. So I said. It takes a beating on I, your Well, back. she said, yeah. yeah, she said, you know, I'm, I'm playing well, but I just, uh, it's tough. So kudos to her. I mean, that's an amazing uh Amazing feat to be able to come out here and, and play in this tournament. That's why we're the stronger pregnant, so sex right yeah. there. Hey, you no know? disagreement. I, listen. It's like all of a sudden there's all this weight right in front of you. That's and right. The one good thing about it is is it's harder it's harder to jump up. So you stay down on okay. your shots. There you go. So, I, yeah, so I guess, yeah. I guess you probably experienced that a little bit, didn't you? I did. Dina winning the lag. She will have the, pr the break. Again, Dina Balka of Manny's Angels. They said Manny's a good friend of theirs that, that basically sponsors their team. and So they play under his name. I like her hair. All right, here we go. Strong kind of break, a, but Yeah, I just hit dry. it off on the side a little bit, and it's amazing how often that happens. Look, at all the balls kind of came over except for two on this little part of the uh, section of the table. So this is not going to be a kind of a run out table both of these players being at the level where they can they can run a table skill level five and skill level six jackie is a six and dina is a five but i don't think this rack is going to be one of those for sure so we're looking at a four or five race here oh 14 ball just hanging on the lip of the corner pocket. I'm going to bring Dina back to the table. Of course, we mentioned earlier, Dina and her teammates playing out of the Chestnut Inn in Edison, New Jersey. Sounds like a pretty cool place. 77 years, 77 year old family bar. So if you're ever in the Edison, New Jersey area, definitely a place to check out. Of course, I'm sure some folks back there tuning in to watch. All right, starting out with about the only shot that's available. Nice little break up there to give yourself a shot on the 10. This mo looks more like a straight full rack than it does an eight ball rack with all the balls kind of being together. A lot of little touchy shots here. She wants to draw this up behind the 12 and come up if possible for the shot at the 12. Oh, no, and she fouled, I think. Or was that a... Well, maybe that was just the reaction of the ball. It looked like the cue ball came back and hit the tip of her cue. But neither player, they're both good players, neither one of them reacted, so that must have just been an optical illusion. Well, will that nine ball pass? I'm not sure it will pass that 11. Dina definitely stands out in the crowd with that that uh, rainbow hair. I know. It's I like cool, it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Harlequin. Harlequin hair. Harlequin. You're right. Purple and, and the red. Yeah, the pink. I like it. Some folks asking about where they can watch this match. So if you're joining us on Facebook, you can also watch the match at poolplayers.com slash live, or you can view it over on our YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash APA Leagues. I'd encourage you to, to like our Facebook page here or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're enjoying this content and you want to see more of it. Of course, we have five more championships still to be decided over the next week here in Las Vegas, so you can don't want to miss out on any of the action. Of course, our next final will be tomorrow evening. We'll have the finals of the Nine Ball World Championship, so that should be a Great event. That'll be 3 p.m. Pacific time. 6 p.m. for those of you folks on the East Coast. Good smooth stroke there. I like that. Three ball there is going to be the biggest issue. Everything else has a pocket except for the three ball, so you want to get to that as soon as possible. The two is kind of in a bad spot there as well. You can knock this two out of here now. Nice thin. A little bit of left. Low, low, low. Oh, no. She's 
And she was playing a defense there. All right, not a bad choice. She didn't like it, the offensive part of it there. and don't want to take any chances. It's so hard. When the balls are laying the way they are now, it's, it's you, you don't want to go for it when it's not there. But at the same time, you don't want to get to the point where you're scared of going for it. You right. Know, it's a fine line to, to choose. You don't want to go for it when it's not ready. But so many times I see people are playing too many safeties because they're afraid to go for it, even though if they have the ability to make it happen. Right. Dina has five matches played here in Las Vegas. Jackie has played eight matches, so... Both of them with ample opportunity to get in stroke, if you will. Of it's kind of unfair, this match, though, if you think about it. Because Jackie is, is kind of just two against one here. She's got, you know, some inside help, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, some inside help. Yeah. She actually mentioned that it's it's been very odd for her because, the, you know, the baby is obviously moving and kicking, and she said there have been times that she's taking a shot where she's feeling the baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm sure so that's, that's, that's just amazing. I remember that. You know? Maybe it's helpful, though. Maybe it kind of it, it, it keeps some of the pressure off because you're also focused on, you know, obviously the, the baby in there. And Not only that, but I know for me, I mean, it's a, there's an amazing calm come over you when you're pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, you're just gonna. I guess you're ready. You're nesting. You're getting ready. That whatever happens to your body when when all that, you know, is going on. But Interesting. I know Laura John Hassan. She won several tournaments. Pregnant. She had three children, and she won. I remember she. I think it was three big Gordon's tournaments that we had then for fifty thousand dollar first place tournaments and. I don't know if it was because she knew she needed the money because the baby was coming Amazing. or she was just calm and she couldn't jump up. We, we laughed about it a lot because I know when I was pregnant, too, it's the same thing. It's It just takes everything you have to yeah. just kind of stand back yeah. up again after you bend over the table. I just looked down and, Nicole, I remember that. You were too pregnant. I think I remember that, Nicole. Again, if you're just now tuning in, you're watching live coverage of the Ladies 8-Ball Championship presented by Pool Dog. We are here in Pool Dog Championship Arena at the Westgate Resort in Las Vegas. We are in our second match. Second of three matches. Potentially three matches. Her job here is not done, though. That two ball is in a it's in a bad spot, obviously, with a nine being right there. So we'll see what she's going to do. If she can get on the, I don't see a way. Maybe get on the three ball here. I think I would shoot the three where she was at just there. She would have had a perfect angle making the three ball. The cue ball would automatically go in and break up the two nine. And that would put her pretty much home if she could get that two out of there. Six is uh, sitting right open. So now she's got to deal with this two ball soon, unless she just decides to go ahead and try the bank shot. You saw the angle she came up there. She had to really slam it if she would have shot that the ball before. Not criticizing Jackie's decision in any way, shape, or form, but it's always something to learn. The angle would have been natural to go into those balls, and she wouldn't have to work so hard for it and, and take a chance of missing the shot. Right. Dina Balka back at the table for Manny's Angels. Dina trying to lead her team into a third and final match, hopefully here. Of course, the, the ladies of 
Chicks Ahoy took a 3 nothing lead after that first match. So depending on what happens here in the second match, that'll determine if we see a third. All right, big decision here as far as really think. You know that if you hit this combination in and you hit it straight on, the 15 will stay pretty much there. Where's the cue ball going to be where you can do something with this 9? Either that or going to the 9 now. Oh, she tried. Look at this. And she made a oh, oh. disaster. Ouch. Disaster. Always so dangerous to let that cue ball fly, boy. So Jackie Catlett will take a one nothing lead after Dina pockets the eight ball out of turn. That was unfortunate for, for all that to have to happen. But, um, yeah, I mean, she tried to break them open. She had to break it open because the that had no pocket. It was tough to do what to do, know what to do at that point, so. Dina preparing the rack. Jackie preparing the break here. These are the There's last break. two of 256 teams that started in this event. Both these teams winning in the semifinal round earlier today. Manny's Angels defeated team from Ontario. Wait for it. Chicks Ahoy. Also victorious in the semifinal round over the team of Whiskey Tango. All right, Dina. All right, again, a messy table. It's easy to run out when all the balls are open and just pocket balls. But the la that last break, I mean, Jackie hit a great break there, and so did Dina in the game before, but just everything just kind of got clustered back together again. So right. you see the 14 is in, in the tough spot for her there. She's got to get to that as soon as possible. And again, you play a different game if you're a 5, 6, or a 7 than you do if you're a 2 or 3 or 4 even because the 5, 6, and 7, you're, you're liable to have the you know, situation where you can run out. Well, that means that you don't want to leave the problems for last. I'm more of a beginner want to leave it for last just to stay in the game and everything else, you know, possibly. But for, for a good player, if you say, you know what, I can run out here, you need to deal with that issue as soon as possible. The last thing you want to do is make a whole bunch of your balls and leave one ball on the table when your opponent comes back because they have a huge advantage over you at that point. Ooh. Dina just missed that 10 ball there in the corner. There are men's leagues, Chris. I just looked down. Chris Moore is asking why there are no men's league. We don't, uh, the men's league would locally can have a male only league. But we have an awful lot of teams around the country that are just male players already. But um, yeah. a lot of the women, when they first start out, especially, um, feel a little intimidated playing with the guys. Sure. So they feel more comfortable starting out in the latest division. And not only that, but the ladies have more fun than you people. <laughs> 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 most, most often, the guys get all in a tizzy, get in an argument, and was that a good hit? And, blah, blah, blah. and th most of the women, once in a while, you'll find somebody, but most of the women just, like I said, go out and have a good time and and get better and, and accidentally just really fall in love with the game. They go out for a fun night and then realize how much fun pool really is. We will have final round coverage of the Masters Championship, the Team Captain Championship, both the 8-ball, 9-ball World Championships and the 
Jack and Jill Championship. With some folks asking about which events will be covered. We will have final round coverage of all of those uh, events in the days ahead. Jackie pockets the five in the corner there. All the while, after each shot, she keeps peeking over at that four ball. And knows she has to do something with it. Looking where to be on this one. Now, the choice is going to be, I mean, the, the, the four ball definitely is banking ball in the side if you get good position on it. So if she gives herself a little bit of an angle here, she might want to go ahead and do that since the six ball is blocking the pocket for the 14. At least she's not giving up an easy table. Now with it, she drifted way too far. She can't do that anymore. She's on the incorrect side of this one. Jackie, the highest rated player in the entire match for both teams, skill level six. And again, peeking down at some of the comments, Mike Cristiano said that Jackie and her husband are here for Masters as oh, well. Oh, wow. That's unbelievable. That's I pretty mean, we, cool. We mentioned Jackie's seven months pregnant, so yeah. her trip is not ending today, she's apparently. She's, she's to just do. getting started. Wow. Unbelievable. More, more power to her. Unbelievable. And I don't know, I, w I would love to find out how many times it's happened that one of the ladies that made the finals in the ladies and also in Masters. Probably not that often. I don't think so. Probably not that often. All right, so we got that four out of there. It's not where she wanted it, simply because the six is blocking the 14. She wanted to just get that four out of there, but it's not where she wants it to be because it's still, now it won't go because of the 15. She would have loved to get that out in the middle of the table and put some pressure on Dina. Dina pockets the 13 ball in the corner. And now the same thing again. You're looking at not necessarily wanting to mess with this 15 ball because that's the one thing that she has going for her as far as stopping. So you just make that choice now. Do you want to go for it now? Do you want to try to, do you want to leave the problem for last? Oh, she got snookered. She's right behind the nine. I think she can hit it. The question is she can make it. Can she make it? Robin, you are exactly right. That is what it's about for the vast majority of folks going out on league night and having a good time, getting away from the, the daily stresses of life and, of course, sometimes you just happen to find yourself here in Las Vegas playing for $10,000 in the world's largest pool tournament. That's just kind of a an wow. add-on, if you will, yeah. right? That's just kind of the carrot. But uh, it's, um, it's interesting. You know, uh, um, we have the league area in the Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, Brunswick County area. And what I find is the dif most difficult part is we have players who are s so serious about this game which is great right there's room for everybody well, you like the passion all, all the way to the other side of the spectrum which is people that just want to go out and have fun right you know you got to convince them and explain oh that's going in <sighs> oh no that there are rules yes there are still rules i, I know you want to go out and have fun but you got to keep score buddy yeah you know what i mean right so <laughs> when those two teams meet is usually when there's issues yeah because ultra the one serious and the other ultra one's cheating and the leisure, other one yeah wants to you know calm down we're having fun what right are we talking about? right you do see that from time to time, but of course we should mention too we're fall session right around the corner. So if you're if you're tuning in and you're interested in how you get involved in APA, 
um, how you can ultimately make it out here to, to Vegas to one of our events. I encourage you to go to poolplayers.com and you can join there and put you in touch with the league operator in your area. So now is a great time to get involved. You just might find yourself here in Vegas one day with several hundred people watching you play pool for thousands of dollars. Of course, I was looking at the total prize payout for this event, Ava. Not just this event, but the entire thing. It's like $1.2 million or something like that. For two seven seven million, crazy, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's the biggest one. And it's cash. Had. It's cash. I know. Is that it's in your room? Cool. Do we keep that in your room? That cash? Where's that? Yeah, I got it. Where's that one point two million? Don't worry. <laughs> they have a few dollars around here at these yeah, casinos. Yeah, that's true, anyway, that's so true. They yeah. know how to handle that. There it is. One point two million seven seventy seven thousand five hundred ninety four dollars. Wow. All right now. Wow. This is gonna be an interesting situation here. Let's see if she can get by it. Oh, is she, she going to try to hit the point? I'm not sure what she's doing here. She can hit the point and kind of, it'll kind of cut over to the right. Now oh, just missed it. So but that'll give ball in hand. And look where the six is. This is not over. Normally, I mean, if that six gets out in the middle of the table or is makeable somewhere, this pr pretty much would be over now. Jackie would have this, but. Verifying with an the issue. referee that she has ball in hand. Of course, a couple referees watching this match in addition to our floor managers. And that ball being, you know, if the, if the four was out a little bit more, you could shoot the four 15 combination and snooker her behind the six ball and make the other players ball, but where the, f she would have to play billiard, I think. Funny little spot she's in here, Jackie. Ava, did you know that this year is the largest in terms uh, of participation that we've ever had at the, and you the World Championships? There are people everywhere. everywhere it's packed, Every yeah. And the tables are going nonstop. It's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. The Mini Mania room is crazy. It's so like, you know, if I thought it was big before, you throw in another 384 team captain teams. But not just that, but I've talked to a lot of people here that have come up and said hi, but they said, you know, they're not even playing. They're here to play Mini Mania or hang yeah. out just because they love the atmosphere, they love the tournament, came with their friends. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of people. That's a really the great thing about Mini Mania, too. It's, you know, even if you don't qualify, if you have, you know, enough scores, you can come out and, and get a feel for what it's like to play in this environment with you know with the the rows and rows of of pool tables and all the excitement it's very cool experience so again if you're not involved in APA and you want to get involved fall session right around the corner go to poolplayers.com you can you can actually become a member right there when you hit join and all right we'll here's that shot sorry to interrupt that's here's all right, what she's going right. to do is try to make this 15 but you got to roll the cue ball up now so you don't leave a shot the safe thing here would be to just kind of she could just shoot the six ball towards the eight and then just have the six ball, the cue ball draft it, drift into the uh, to rail for a good hit and leave a safety that way. This is She's taking a risk here. She has to follow it all the way up if she's going to be able to do this. Or she will leave a shot on the eight for Dina. Uh-oh. And that's what she did not want to happen. I bet you she can cut that in. It looks like it's close. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. It may have rolled about a, a quarter of an inch too far for her to be able to cut that down in the corner. Dina's going to take a time out here. I believe this is Irene Snell that is talking to Dina, both members of Manny's Angels. Again, they are from Edison, New Jersey. Their opponents from Hampton, Virginia, the team of Chicks Ahoy. They are currently leading 
the overall match. That's thanks to Jacqueline Reesig's 3 0 win in the first match. So, Manny's Angels needing Dina to come up big here. Again, this would be significant, Ava, because they've actually yet to be on the, the scoreboard, right, mm -hmm. in, in either match. So, right. You can see in the background there Jackie talking to her team captain, Kathy Repass. And she's going to try to she's going to try to cut it in, get by that six ball. It is so close. I can't even tell you. You just got to trust it, and if you hit it slowly enough, then the eight should be able to hit the side rail. No problem. It still go in if it's high enough. Up, considering how close to the rail it is, here it goes. No, Ooh. not that pocket. Oh, no. oh wow. wow. But when it rains, it pours. This is the same thing happened in the last match yeah. between Jacqueline and Sherry. That's I mean, just tough. a fluke. She tough. tried to break some balls up, and the eight ball went in and scratched at the same time. So for the Early second eight. game in a row, Dina will pocket the eight out of turn. And will now, Ava, really need to, to kind of mentally get it back together because that's got to be tough that's got to weigh heavy obviously her team down three nothing she knows that that she needs to come up big here so still a ways to go in this match of course this is a four or five race jackie still needs three games so plenty of time but but now is the time yeah but right? you know it's one of those things where um obviously if, if she if she were to lose this this uh it's over i mean you know she has to win here but the deal is that if in any sport, I think any sport, it's really important that you forgive yourself. Sure. And let go of what happened. It's not over until it's over, until the last ball is made. I don't care if somebody is, you know, on the hill and you have zero. It doesn't matter. It's not over till it's over. You just got to keep on trucking. Well, and this team faced some adversity early on in the tournament. Again, they lost their very first match, so still opportunity here. It's always difficult, you know. You see, it, you see it from here. First of all, those of us sitting at home or sitting up here commentating, we have we don't have the nerves that they do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the pressure. It is kind of hard to watch, though. I mean, it you is. know, it's, it's, uh, well, I, do, you get I get very nervous for them. Absolutely. As we're watching, we here have our world qualifiers at home, and yeah. I I'm not rooting for anybody, but I I feel their nerves, and yeah. I walk around like a like a nervous wreck. <laughs> But you also don't see what they're looking at. In other words, e the, even the overhead, everything right. is skewed a little bit. There's no way to really see, especially when it comes to little t touchy position shots, is the cue ball over an inch this way or an inch that way. It changes your selection as far as what shots to shoot. All right. Pockets the 15. I think that was the 15 ball in the corner. a lot of traffic down there in that lower right corner. I think that nine ball is dead, though. That helps her a bit there right there. There you go. That definitely the helps. All right, 14 ball. The 14 ball is Dina's problem right now to try to figure out as soon as she can. Don't think about it. I mean, think about it while you're standing up. Don't think about it when you're down shooting. That's a golden rule that we all break. Pockets the 10 in the corner. She would have, if she hits this really thin, overcuts it a bit, she might be able to come back and hit that 14. Oh, she's going to play, play safety. safe. All right, not a bad choice. Left zero shots here for Jackie. And the good smart thing about that is playing a safety now. Well, she still has, even though it's only 
leave three balls on the table, four balls on the table. At least she didn't run it down to where she had one, just the one ball left because that's when Jackie would be in complete control. So just kind of improve your position a little bit. I think Jackie has found a combo here on this five ball. It's nowhere near straight in. It looked like she was aiming, but you could see there she's going to have to cut it. The part of the 13 ball is in the way, but it's about the only thing she has right now. All right, table opened up. 14 ball is still in trouble for Dina, but now she has a few more choices as far as dealing with it. Some folks asking about the abbreviations next to the players' names. Those are abbreviations for their team names. Tina, or I'm sorry, Dina, who is at the table. Uh, you see the MA there stands for Manny's Angels out of Edison, New Jersey. And Jackie, who is seated, plays for the team of Chicks Ahoy out of Hampton, Virginia. So that is the abbreviations you're seeing there on the score screen. Nice shot. Oh, I thought you made it. That was a good choice, though. She tried to make that and had a good chance of breaking up the 14 balls. So kind of an uh, offensive shot. Now she's in a bad spot, though, with the 13 balls. So advantage to Jackie here, considering where her balls are. The only issue she has anywhere is the 1 and 6. But at least they're open, and they do have a pocket if she can make that one ball in the corner pocket. It might even be dead off the six ball in the corner. Of course, we mentioned we are here in Pool Dog Championship Arena. I want to make sure we credit them. They are the presenting sponsor of our coverage here of the World Championships. Appreciate all their support. You can visit their booth here at the event. I know they've got some giveaways and things. Of course, you can also go to their website, pooldog.com slash APA champs, where they've got a number of offers for our members and the viewers who are tuning in. Jackie pockets that seven ball on the side, that strangely cover colored seven ball. And we mentioned earlier, these are the the Aramith TV balls, so that's the reason for some of the coloration for those that are not used to that. Nice, and that solved that. One ball definitely goes, if she can draw it back, I think the six ball goes too, just barely. Four passes by the strike ball on the other side of the table. So the six ball question is, does that go by? No, 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 no. You know, we were talking about how crowded it is and how many people there are here. Mm -hmm. And that's before the crazy eight ball players get here. Right. It doesn't <laughs> even start till tomorrow. <laughs> they're all coming. Yeah. They're all coming today, more yeah. than I would think. I think, yeah, I think a lot of them probably come in today. Of course, the pool party tonight, 8 yeah. o'clock here, poolside at the Westgate. If you are here in Las Vegas, you're definitely going to want to check that out. Always a great time. Good way to kind of start the night if you're heading out on the town. Eight ball will begin tomorrow. And then, of course, we still have Masters that's yet to begin. And the team captain championship kicked off yesterday. Jack and Jill will be starting. So it's still a lot to feel like we've been here a while, but still so much to go. So much to do. You know, being a six, I suspect that that was an intentional move. And if it was, that was phenomenal play. Oh, boy. Holy smokes. That a lot happened right there. It looked like she actually moved the, the 13 ball out of the way a little bit intentionally when she shot the one ball so that the six would pass. But she needed to make that three. And instead, that kind of made a real mess of things for Jackie. Wow. 
Yeah, it, 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 all our fields were full out here. I was asking uh, yeah. Bill Tutts, the head tournament director, and he said that a few play a few teams short, just a handful of teams in short the team in captain the team event. captain tournament, which is to be expected. I still couldn't believe how many we had since it's the first year we yeah. had that tournament. Well, here. and that's the largest of the showdown series events. So the right. showdown series events being your ladies eight ball, your team captain championship, your Jack and Jill championship, and masters. All, most of those are 256 team fields, with the exception of the team captain is 384. So, and we had, and I think he said like 365 or something total or whatever yeah. it was. It yeah. wasn't, it was just a handful of teams that either didn't make it or, whatever the reason is. But to to get 384 t uh, teams the very first year that yeah. we've had it is pretty incredible. It's a packed house here at the Westgate. Of course, I know the hotels sold out. And 700 teams in eight ball, which will be starting tomorrow. 500 we had 500 teams playing in the nine ball world championship so somewhere around 15 we estimate about 15,000 total participants coming out over the course of the event so it's if you've never been here it is a sight to see from the the setup of the room to all the pool players to just all the enthusiasm really a, a, a great event something that we look forward to year round and and here we are it's While almost Jackie like we never left. Yeah, I know. <laughs> While Jackie's looking at this, I want to uh, respond to Mike Farley. You've got to remember that APA, just as uh, it is in the pros it, in most of the events, is cue ball foul only. Um, we play that all the way through the tournament because there's no way to have a referee at each and every table in here. So we go by uh, with the uh, cue ball foul only, and uh, we include that in the finals. If it players want to have the referee come and be involved in this match, they can ask them to come and, and take a look at something. All right, cat and mouse game. Not everybody's trying to get the, their series of balls in a little bit better position. Jackie probably has the advantage there, except for the 13 ball that's tied up with the five. The five goes in the corner, I believe, but the 13 does not. So I don't think this rack is going to be over anytime soon. They're going to play smart, and they're going to fight to the death here. Not to the death. Come no, on. I, oh. Not to the death. That's what it feels like when you're out there. Oh, man. You've I can't never, handle have that. Have you ever competed at anything? You have, haven't you? Um, do you forget that my team won back-to-back -back division championships in our office league? I forgot that uh -huh. already. Yeah. I'll bring my trophy so you can see <laughs> it. Yeah, could you? Okay. Frank needs company. We'll put we'll put the trophy right yeah. here next to Frank on the hey. full dog table. Although I will say we did not win this, this last session. We actually did not even make the playoffs, unfortunately. Ah. So. But then you should know nerves it does feel yes. when you're out especially there especially when you get to that that higher level i mean even even our even our playoffs at that level right. i mean it's it's a different experience than league night um and then you get out here and it's just a whole other level of intensity it is i'm always very impressed that that uh, a lot of these players can perform as as well as they can with this yeah. kind of pressure i just be very very difficult jack is she's looking to see if this four ball goes off the 13 in the side it doesn't look like it does from here. It looks like it's going to go about a couple of inches past it. If you hit it harder, it'll come shorter, maybe a little bit. You might be able to get away with it, but I don't know. It's going to be close. Yeah, just barely. All right, everything opened up here, and this is... Dina's time to shine. This is, she's like you said before, you can't wait much longer than this. This is when you got to make something happen. You need to get that first win under their belts, too. Yeah. You know, that's. Yeah, Kelly making a, b a good point at, at how exhausting it is for these teams that get to this point because of all the right. the matches they've logged throughout the tournament. And every round, you know, the intensity just goes up. Dina pockets the 14 in the corner there. She can make the 13 in the side pocket, or she can go ahead and make this. It easily passes under the 8. Unless she has too much of an angle, I would shoot the 11 and just drift down to the end table and come out a little bit for shooting the 13 in the other side. But I think she doesn't like 
I think she feels like she has too much of an angle. If you are just tuning in, you are watching final round coverage of the Ladies 8 Ball Championship here at Pool Dog Championship Arena, the Westgate in Las Vegas. Oh. Well, she controlled her cue ball, though, to stay on that side of the table, so... Unless, I don't think there's any way to make the six ball down there. She's left to Jackie a tough backwards cut on the six. But it's one of those. You make it, you should, he, she should be home free. If you don't, Dina back in control again. This is what, you know, one thing I do like about eight ball the most, I think, is that it, it especially when it's kind of a mess like this and you got to play, it's not, it's not as engaging to watch for somebody who doesn't play the game mm. like if my mother was watching she would go okay what w w you know the last track was over in, in two minutes what's going on you know <laughs> right. what are they doing right but if you really enjoy the strategic part of it is it's fun to watch okay this is the shot six ball in the corner can she hold it for the four in the side Oh, did not want to go into that. Pockets wow. the six in the corner. It's almost like both players know what a huge rack this is. Yeah. And you can see she's not overly enthused about what just happened. No. Is she actually going to gonna try to bank this? I don't know what else really. There's really nowhere to go because, I mean, unless she kind of floats the cue ball down towards the s eight, but you don't want to risk that either. And because she is jacked up over the 11, it's really hard to, to be real precise on a shot like this. Okay. <laughs> and it just I don't know who's going <laughs> to deal with that, but yeah. clean up on aisle three. <laughs> clean up on corner pocket. And Eesh. I think Dina has to shoot the combination here. You don't want to take a chance. I think that shooting this ball on the side is risky. You don't want to try to shoot a combo with the 11 because the eight is right there. Things can go very wrong. You can see there she can hit enough of the 13 ball without committing a foul on the four to make, I mean the 11 to make the 13. Just want to make sure you want to hit low on this. If you follow it, the cue ball can do one of those funny quirky things and move forward and make the eight. <laughs> Just a lot of high. All right, here we go. I don't. I don't think the time that I've done the commentary, any at least for our our APA matches, um, I haven't seen a stalemate. We see them from time to time at yeah, home. Yeah, it's in true. Our I don't world I don't qualifiers. Yeah. But I have not seen one here. This could be. Kevin, these are the TV balls that you reference, which is why the colors are slightly different than what some folks might be used to. Okay. So Jackie pockets one of Dina's balls to kind of clean up that pocket there. Dina Balka back at the table here. I don't think Dina can hit this five, and even if she can, you don't really want to make it because you can't, even if she makes it now, what is she going to do with the eight ball?
Oops. All right. I see a little safety here, unless she goes ahead and goes gutsy, but you don't want to do that. The fact that the eight ball is level to be made. So you just got to keep, be patient. She's got the control of the table right now. Just make things miserable for, for Jackie for as long as she can until Jackie makes a mistake. Yeah, I figure we'll take a time out here. Yeah. Good time for one. Irene Snell will come out and have a conversation with Dina while they do that. We want to make sure we mention our sponsors, Action Cues, Aramith, Billiard Balls, our friends at Nationwide, and of course Pool Dog, our presenting sponsor here. If you go to pooldog.com slash APA Champs, they've got some different offers for APA members exclusively for them. So uh, hop on over there when you get a chance and, and uh, get your latest billiard accessories. Of course, if you're here in Las Vegas, check out their booth. One of the many vendors that are here at the World Championships. Appreciate all their support. There you go. There's the shot. Patience, patience, patience. I love the setup here in the, the Pool Dog Championship Arena. Very, very cool. They've really refined this. To, uh, Bill and his tournament team have really done a, a great job in terms mm -hmm. of the setup and the overhead projectors. So folks out in the hall, I mean, you can see back down the hall, lots of folks standing out there I know it. watching on the overheads. Now okay. Jackie pockets Dina's ball. Well, she just pretty much said, you know what? <laughs> I take that safety ball away from you. So now yeah. what are you going to do? And this is well, the strategy here is, is yeah. pretty impressive between these two. At two this smart point. players. Yes. So what you want to do here, you just c have to make sure you don't hit it too th firm, is just to lay that cue ball on the 13. The question is, you can go from it uh, from a little bit more above. You can go from below here and just touch it, get real close, just barely hit it real soft. Mm. And have the referee come over. But uh, she's not going to hit it. Obviously, obviously the eight ball. She's going to hit the other side of it. You hit this a little too hard, though, and it's curtains. Nice shot. Good shot there by Dina. We'll see what Jackie wants to do here. Referee's going to come over and watch. Oh, wow. Just touched it. Beautiful. But this can go on for a while because, <laughs> again, but this is what happens. You have two smart players. They're not going to make any... You know, take any chances sure. or go for a crazy shot. So we don't have the three foul rule in the the APA. So you can, you know, she can try to, to hit that eight ball over and over and over and miss it. And it's still going to be ball on hand. It's not a three foul loss of game rule. <laughs> and this could be one of those where I was talking about stalemate. We're starting to hit head into that part of it now where if it gets to the point where neither player will make a, any attempt and they both go here I'm not going to shoot it and the other player says well I'm not going to shoot it either that you have yeah. nowhere to go but to same person break in again and you play the rack over we're not there yet but it's it's starting to head Getting that close. way close and Jackie's very very I mean, they're both very patient. I like it. Of 
quite a few folks tuning in this afternoon, Ava. Over the thousand viewer mark again. Watching live final round coverage. The ladies eight ball championship. Dina is going to give ball in hand now to Jackie. And we'll see if Jackie opts to take a shot or not. A less patient player would go ahead and bank this eight ball in the corner right now. <laughs> ball in <laughs> hand, you can put it, you know, down towards the end rail and bank it into the corner, but that is not necessarily the smart shot. That would just be for somebody who likes to fire them up. I'm going to try to hit this. Oh. There you go. Wow. See, the perfect shot for her now. She has now left it in position where... Dina needs to obviously hit this ball, but if she fails to, or even if she does, chances are she's going to leave a shot on the eight. I would tie this eight up. I would just play thin hit the eight. Give Jackie ball in hand, but just push the eight up against the 13. Because she is... Yeah, there you go. You see a ball did not go to a rail after contact. So Jackie now with ball in hand and shooting on the eight ball. Is this what she's going to go for? It. I figured sooner or later she's going to go, okay, I can't do this anymore. I'm going for the win. This is it. Going to try to bank that eight ball in the corner. Oh, all right. She didn't give enough, and not enough angle on her position there with the cue ball, so she got a double kiss. That eight ball came right back and hit the cue ball again, so. New life for Dina. Yep. That's that, and All that's right. that. Dina yeah. is on the scoreboard, and this kept herself alive there. That was a huge, huge rack for, for Dina and for Manny's Angels. Boy, did they need that. Yeah, oh yeah. So Dina gets her team on the scoreboard now. We now have a race to three. Great looking arena here. Love these big screens where no matter where you're sitting, you can see it. And that's why there's so many people standing out in the, in the doorway because they can see it. Right. Getting a nice look at the, the team of Chicks Ahoy there in the red. And their, uh, their fan section, if you will. Overall match score, Marco, is 3 to nothing in favor of Chicks Ahoy. They took that first match 3-0. So a win here by Jackie would clinch the championship. Jackie leading two to one, but needing an extra game. So we are essentially here at a race to three now. And next up will be nine ball finals tomorrow. Three tomorrow, o three o'clock Pacific. So if you're on yes. the East Coast, six o'clock. Yep. So. Eat dinner time. early and then tune in. Or tune in while you eat dinner. Either way. <laughs> Either way. Come back and see us. We'll be here. All right. Dina nice with break. The break. Again, nice break by Dina. Pockets and the 13 in the corner. And Dina's kind of strutting a little bit now. She's got new life. Yep. There you go. You need to move around well that you think table. about how different this match could be. I mean, th those two mm -hmm. games that Jackie's won, both, uh, you know, inadvertently... Dina inadvertently pocketing the eight ball. And 
Yeah. Well, now we're going to see here if she can get the tempo a little bit going. She's got nothing to lose. and She got that one win that she needed. She's very much in this match now. And she has the kind of the emotional advantage over Jackie. After Jackie, mi uh, you know, kind of lost patience, went yeah, for that, that bank and game. missed it. It sure was. Look at that. Fired that ball in. She did. She tried to draw in and stir up that little mini cluster on the table there to open the table completely up. Shoot this nine ball. She can come up and break those up if she hits a little bit. Uh, no, she's going to just go ahead and tap it in, it looks like. Look. Pockets the nine in the corner. This is the first of six championships to be decided here at the APA World Championships. This event got underway on Thursday with 256 teams down to the final two here in the championship round. Nice smooth stroke there. All right, it's time to really make a game plan here, Dina. She has left the two trouble balls and the eight ball on the other side of the table. But this is what Dina, this is kind of Dina's game plan every rack has been to make about three or four balls and then play a safety if, mm. if, insta if you, she wasn't able to break them open. And it's been like that in, in all three racks, I believe. Oh, boy, that was not the plan. Mm. Not part of the plan. Dina scratches in that corner pocket. And the bad part about that now, she has made enough of her balls to open up the table, and Jackie has ball in hand now to where she can figure out a way to break up this mess that's going on here at the ta on the uh, this part of the table. I want to remind the folks that are here in Las Vegas, the event, we have the pool party tonight at 8 o'clock. That is right here at the Westgate's pool. Be a great time. I think we've got Florian Kohler coming out to do uh, some trick shots. And I know Jeanette Lee just got here today. She'll be out there. And of course, it's hot and the pool will nice be shot. open. So come out and see us this evening. One of these ladies' teams will be celebrating big time, I'd imagine. I think they both should celebrate. Absolutely. Well, I mean, either way, I mean, you're in the finals. You got money coming, and yeah. they're, they're they're really doing a good job out here. I mean, handling this pressure like they're pros. You know, people ask us in the, on the pro tour. It's like, Ava, how do you handle it? And I go, Well, <laughs> you just handle it. But we've had years of practice, and we still feel like sure. we're going to fall apart. You can see sometimes, you know, players' hands will mm -hmm. go out on the table, and it's shaking. You can't hardly. Well, you can imagine how some of these guys feel. There's a lot of people watching this from around the world. Right. YouTube, Facebook. People at home going, why did you do that? <laughs> you know, why did you shoot the four ball yeah. instead of a five? Yeah. Yep. The keyboard cowboys. That's what I like to call them. Definitely something to be said for playing under the pressure here. The worst thing about hand, you know, playing under the pressure is, to me, it's not the fact that you shake or, or can't breathe, <laughs> but your brain goes, you completely brain locked sometimes. You could sit here and, and there's an obvious shot there and some of the best players in the world, j you just don't see it. It's like you want to shake your head because you can't really think straight. Right. Usually that's because you're not breathing enough. So something to remind players when you do get in pressure like this locally or on a, a you know, national world stage like this, breathe. Take deep breaths through your nose, out your mouth, and really, really, really make sure to pay attention to your breathing. Some questions about what's, the, what's at stake here. Of course, the first place prize is $10,000. Um, but as Ava mentioned, the runner-up is going to take home 5000 So 
you know, one way or another, both these teams are going to have a nice payday. But, but you know, more importantly, I'm sure to, to both of them is that trophy and that, that title. So. Yeah, you can spend money. Probably, you know, chances are you're going to spend the money before you even leave sure. here. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Depending yeah. on your personality. But the the prestige of being yeah. you the can champion. You can yeah. see some of the, how that payout Stays goes. Pay out all the way down through 33rd place. So you can get an idea for, for what different teams are going home with based on how they finished in the tournament. This is Dina from the team of Manny's Angels at the table here. Dina fighting to get her team back in this match. It looks like she is playing a safety here. Uh-oh, look out. Ooh, ooh, Got away ooh. with one there. A good opportunity here, though, for Jackie. Jackie and her team are from Hampton, Virginia. They are the team of Chicks Ahoy. Some folks asking about where the teams are from. Manny's Angels are from Edison, New Jersey. Chicks Ahoy, they play out of... Where do they say they played out of? Peninsula Billiards. And they said they've been playing together for about five years, so actually finished ninth last year in this event, so. And Manny's Angels play out of Chestnut Inn up there in Edison, New Jersey, so. Probably some folks back at both of those places tuning in, and I know the ladies appreciate your support and following their matches. Jackie pockets the seven ball in the corner. I think she has enough of an angle to come up and play the six ball in the opposite corner. So you'd love to go above it a little bit to where she doesn't have to go into the 15 to get position from the six to the eight. And she did perfectly. That's great. Now she can, all she has to do now is make the six ball and she can either come one cushion and up for the eight We'll put a little bit of left on this is what I would prefer and go two cushions. That way you don't take a chance of, you kind of widen your angle and chance of getting position on the eight here. So just a little bit of left spin. She can go two rails or one cushion down and up. It's just a speed shot. A lot of times when you're in this situation, you know you, you have to get far enough up to not get snookered by the 15. A lot of times people kind of go too far to where it becomes a really tough shot on the 8 because you're so focused on not coming up short. Nice. All right. No, she didn't. Oh, she just got there. That's perfect. Wanted to come about another three or four or five inches, but this will work. Jackie marks her pocket. Somebody's excited. We're hearing... Uh, Quite a bit of applause from the other side of the wall here in the tournament room. Nice shot. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Pockets that eight ball in the corner. That Jackie was well played. Now leading by a score of three to one. Impressive too, because you heard all that that noise from that other mm -hmm. the other side of the wall, and she kind of had to regroup and kind of recompose herself. And some crazy captains that did something. Good yeah, in there, somebody's like. excited out there. 
So, of course, this the, the Pool Dog Championship Arena is just a small portion of uh, the, the tournament area here at the Westgate. You've got uh, 300 and, and some odd tables throughout the Westgate's convention space. So you have two or three massive ballrooms just filled with rows and rows of, of tables. So you're getting a look at uh, Pool Dog Championship Arena here, some of the folks that are checking out uh, us, checking out them. No kiss cam this year, though. Remember the kiss cam yeah, last what, year? what happened to the kiss cam? I don't know. Anybody jump on Come that? Come on. Come on. No. No. No, no takers. No. No. What about them? No. No. <laughs> Steve's trying to get some kiss cam. Nobody's nobody's having it. <laughs> Folks taking in the, the finals of the Ladies 8 Ball Championship here at the Westgate in Las Vegas. First of six championship matches. The teams of Manny's Angels from Edison, New Jersey, and the Chicks Ahoy from Newport News, Virginia, as I see the commenters correcting us. I guess for some reason the score sheet says Hampton, Virginia. Is it is the league from Hampton? Yeah. Or, well, and the players from possibly. Newport News or the other way around? We'll just say they're from that area of All Virginia. Right. But the most important thing to know about them is that they are leading by a score of three to nothing. You know, you got Chicks Ahoy with, and then a Manny's Angels. We had two teams from our Coastal Carolina APA area. Two gotta ladies give them teams. A, it, two ladies nice. teams. Yeah, I got to give them a shout out. We had uh, Bank on it, and we had Ava's Angels. Oh wow! Yep. Look at that. So Ava, of course, is a league operator in yep. South Carolina. Runs an APA my league. My girls. You've been doing that? What? How long have you been a league operator now? Nine years. Has it been that long? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you really love it, right? I mean, you, you've stuck around, so you... I have some crazy people I know in my area. It's a family they business, are so much too. fun. You oh, got yeah. the, the yeah. kids involved no, and everything. Great. My daughter, my, my son-in-law. Nice. My husband, to some extent. We kind of only bring him out if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> we, we control the environment we put Mitch in. Yeah. No, we have a blast. It's a lot of fun. Of course, any folks that are interested in, in potentially becoming an APA League operator, there are some great markets still out there. Not a yeah. lot of them because most of, you know, we're almost a 40-year-old uh, league, Ava. That's Next incredible. year will be our 40th. So, whew. Cue ball hanging right on the corner pocket. But if you go to our website, poolplayers.com, and check out the franchise information, you can kind of see which, which markets are still out there. And, you know, I know there's some great ones through California. I think uh, – Corpus Christi down in Texas still available, so there's some nice markets still out there. It's a fun, it's a fun thing to do. Fun, but it's hard work, it's right? Yeah, I don't think I don't think most work. people realize no. that, uh, that the level of work that, that goes into being well, a league any operator. Business, you know, my whole family had you know had own business, but I mean, you you have to run it that way. It's a ton of work, the yeah. paperwork that that AP that we do with APA just to try to keep it fun, fair, make sure that everything is up and right, legal, done right. Um, qualification for teams but also you know making sure that we try to help teams find players help players find teams and find locations and make sure that the locations are on board and right it's it's kind of i think most people more would than be you think it is i think most people would be shocked to know that when we bring in new league operators they actually come to st louis for like seven or eight days of yeah, pretty intensive training. training eight hour days of, of training uh, and then they come back like three or three or four months later for a secondary training. So a lot that goes into being a league operator. A lot of things that, that a lot of times the players don't necessarily That's see. That. Well, especially, yeah, and, and if you have been a player before and part of the league and you go, well, how tough can it be? Right, and you get out right. there and it goes, what? And then you realize, <laughs> then you realize, yeah. Well, it was a good shot there by uh, Jackie to break that up a little bit, but she has left herself not much to look at here. A crazy thin cut do a die situation on this ball, as you can see, what a severe angle that is. And she would have to play pretty perfect speed to get across, so I'm not sure she's going to go ahead and go for it. But the pockets are playing big. It sits so dry here, brand new sliding cloth. And if she can at least hang it in the pocket. No, she went for the bank. Look out, look out, cue ball. Mm. Yeah, she wouldn't have liked that anyway. So here we go. A little bit fortunate there as far as the leave. 
Dina is going with all these balls I have left. You couldn't have left me more than this. Dina at the table here of Manny's Angels. Good shot. Looks pretty dark here for Jackie. No jump shots, uh, jump cues are allowed in the uh, in the uh, amateur on the APA. Yeah, masters, masters, you, masters you is, can the, have is the exception to that. Yeah. Main reason for that is obvious. It's it's pretty much just only benefiting your higher skill level Favors players. the higher level, and they definitely. have enough of an advantage as it is. Sure. So let's not encourage them. But anyway, yeah. the, but if you you can still jump with your own cue. As long as the location is okay with it, too. That's the other caveat yeah, of that if rule. Yeah, there's, <laughs> if there's a sign on the wall saying no jump shots, then, right. then no jump oh, shots. Holy there. smokes! Looky there. <laughs> Looky there. 15 ball sneaks in that side she pocket. She smiled a little bit, Dina, shaking her head because I think she was trying to kick at that 13. But, hey, maybe she was way ahead of us on that either way the ball is made and now she still has a lot of work to do trying to make this 13. would a player residing in a town 40 miles away be allowed to play in the mb myrtle league? beach league sure why not come on down as long as, as long you're good with the drive as long as you're nice you can come over yeah Speaking of nice, a lot of great sportsmanship I've already seen this week with especially in this ladies division in mm -hmm. particular. I mean it's it's amazing these ladies hugging at the end of the match and, and you know, congratulating each other. Wow. Yeah. I mean and not only that, but I was watching some of the uh, um uh, team captain matches and they were having a ball. The yeah. two teams that I have, one has three guys on it, one has two two men and, and a woman and both matches they played, played kind of mixed teams, and they were just having a good time yeah. and getting to know each other. And I know that some of the people here that are players from my area have made lifelong friends from all over the country when That's they've come cool. to the national championship or the world championship. So if you're on your way out here or if you're here and you're playing, just remember sportsmanship definitely matters. It's kind of a life thing, isn't it? I think so. Okay. I was watching. Uh, there was a video a couple months ago. I don't know if you saw it. It was a, it was a baseball game, and the pitcher like struck out the batter, and his team goes crazy to celebrate in the championship. The pitcher goes to the batter, who was like his childhood friend, and is consoling him. Mm. I don't know if you saw that. I mean, it got millions it's of views on the internet. Cool, yeah. Very cool. I mean, it, you know, just things like that. Boy, we really need more of that today. Not just in pool, but but in <laughs> almost every facet of of We had a very life. cool situation like that in our juniors. We have a junior program in um, in Myrtle Beach, seven age seven years up to to uh, before you turn eighteen. Nice. And we had this little kid Jeremiah who was who really got unlucky. He played really well. He played against somebody that that it was a good match. They were both incredibly courteous, super kids, and they lost in the finals. Yeah. And he walked straight over and didn't just shake hands with the other kid. He took his hand and held it up in oh the air. Wow. Like it was the coolest sportsmanship. That's great. So we sent two kids to St. Louis for the uh, National Junior Championship. Good shot there. And it, it was great. That it was, was an awesome event, too. Oh, yeah, of course, super, that was in so July. Glad. And I would say to our viewers, if you if you are involved in pool and you want to get your kids involved, it is an, it's an absolutely great way that you can share the sport you love. I love it. Uh, talk to your league operator. Uh, not necessarily every league offers juniors yet. Um, sometimes it takes some help from those in the local community to kind of get it going. But uh, once you can get it going, it's, it's a pretty cool thing, getting these kids playing pool. And the junior nationals is just amazing. Our first year in St. Louis, of course, that's where St. Uh, APA is based. So we were able to take in uh, most of that tournament. All right, here we go. Straight in on this. She's going to have to cheat the pocket a little bit to come up. She can either force 
center ball and come up or follow it. We're just going to have to put some right on it. If she's going to shoot this, you need to get up to be able to make the four ball in the corner. The only other option is to shoot the four now on the side and then deal with with this. We'll see what she's going to do. I think she has enough an of an angle to get up. Yeah, oh, too far. Holy smokes. Slow down. That's no, all right. And for those that are watching that are wondering how these teams got here and how all these players got to Vegas, of course, it all starts with getting involved with APA at the local level, joining the association, getting on a team, and getting going, playing weekly there in your local area. And then, you know, maybe, just maybe. Mm-hmm. You find yourself out here. Of course, this is only one of two championships we do here in Las Vegas. We do the pool player championships, which is individual play. That's held in the spring. Yeah, there's so many ways. If this is what you want to do, you yeah. want to come out here and play on the biggest stage we have in amateur pool, then then singles to me is the, the absolute best or easiest way, if you will, to get out to there. Qualify, play on a uh, singles board. And yeah, playing a singles board qualify for the regionals. But, I mean, it, you can play in singles, doubles, Jack and Jill, Masters, now Team Captain's Championship, so many April things, nine ball, yeah. yeah, and juniors to get to St. Louis. So yeah. it's it's kind of cool to have all that. It's a lot to keep track of for us league operators, but <laughs> it's it's fun. It's great that there's so many different. So it fits your lifestyle. You know, if you can only play, let's say, doubles every other Friday night or whatever, like, then that's what you can make time for. Sure. Dina shooting on the eight Here ball. We go. Nice. Dina pocketing and the, the eight ball. The crowd is loving it. They're hoping for a tight match here, obviously. We're now at a 2-2 race between these two. So, tough match. I mean, th this is this has been, for both these ladies, tough, tough match. Been very impressed by the way Dina has responded to the those first couple games. You mm -hmm. know, the, the eight out of turn, and she's really kind of showed some mental fortitude to, to come back. So, of course, we've got lots of social media content that's being generated throughout the tournament. Make sure you like us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the exciting things that we have to offer. If you just can't get enough of all things APA, of course, the team shirt contest going on right now. If you happen to be out here, make sure you enter your your team shirt or your team in the team shirt contest. And that'll be open for voting shortly after the event concludes. I think it's like the top five. Mm -hmm. We recognize the top five, something like that. So top three, not sure, but it's always a fun part of the event, seeing all the different team names and and shirt designs. Solid break there, but Not nothing noise. goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nothing goes. Wide open table here. See some offense coming. Well, w as with any table that's open like this and looks like a smorgasbord, the first thing you got to do is make sure you make the first ball. <laughs> you know, I kind of like the stripes here, but there's no definite makeable stripe shot here you're almost going to have to go shooting the six ball well no that's no i'm sorry i messed up where the cue ball is no she's good shape there with the 11 ball i don't know that's tough to tell now there you have it so what do you like here you like going high down? You going yeah, high balls, stripes? Yeah, I like the stripes. All right, no, we'll see. See if Jackie is taking your advice. It appears so. Yeah, but she didn't make. Oh, she does not make a ball. The table remains open. <laughs> Flo Biddle, James, that you wouldn't be the only team that's had that happen to him. He said we. First time in Vegas, we they partied too much and <laughs> didn't do too well in the tournament. But that, there are quite a few teams that that have that, and that's okay too. You know, I mean, yeah. For for so many of these folks, it's like they get out here and they're just happy to have done it. Yeah, but you know what's you know? difficult is if you have eight players on the team, and you have three or four people that come out here and.
party enough to where either miss the match the next day or have a hangover or whatever it is, that's not okay for the rest of the team. Right. If you're playing in singles, you do what you want to do. Right. But you're also representing your whole area, you know, right. everybody that plays in your league. So, yeah, no, I'm. it's not okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> My team can never qualify to come here, so. Because we would definitely be partying it up. Yeah, you can party after. Imagine the partying when you win. You know, that's the cool thing about um, the compu sport, where, where you can now follow your, your matches, and you can really track. You can look at the bracket now and see basically when, based on wins and losses, your team could potentially play. Right. really allows players and teams to. Nice shot kind of better schedule their their time in Las Vegas because of course most of it's going to be spent playing the tournament at least if you're playing well but there are pockets of time where if you want to you know go see a show or oh, come course. out to the Absolutely. pool party and or, you know you, you can really even before you get here you can look at that compu sport and and figure out when your when your team's looking at playing so technology Let's just making things better do here not sure what she was trying to do there. She tried to bank that 14 or have the cue ball carry him off the 11. Not sure what she was trying to do. But this puts Jackie back table again. Do I sense that you're rooting for Dina? I absolutely do oh, not root. Okay. I have no interest in rooting, and okay. that's one thing I don't do now. But I'm kind of rooting for the third match, though. How can you not root for the third yeah. match? Which means Dina's got to win. Yeah, but see, if you, if you go win. ahead, you can't do that because then all of a sudden you get in the third and then Dina's team win, you're gonna, then Jackie's going to say, real nice. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jason. Well, now, we, we root for both. I always like to see a full match. I so do I like, like to see, to see it go three deep. So. Three matches deep, yeah. no question about so that. We, so, so, does the, so does the crowd. Yeah. But I've learned between doing commentary and for the pros for years and having the league, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, better, I want, better I want to players stay to neutral. Maybe I'm getting old, but I want them to perform at their best. Yeah. You know what I mean? I w sure. I'm, I'm rooting for everybody to play well. So, well, both these ladies playing well thus far in this very tight match. It's not the ball she wanted to make. And now Dina has the best position ever. If she can have the cue ball a little bit closer to the 11, she'd be in good shape. But this is great for her right now. All she has to do is make this ball, and everything else is just lying there for the taking. She's going to have automatic position, obviously, on the 10 or the 14. Everything is open, and she missed it. Mm. All right. Time for Jackie to fire it up. Chris Moore is my favorite. He said I'm getting wise, not getting old. There you go. He's my favorite. Um, funky situation for Jackie to be in, boy. I don't envy her here. If she's going to go offense, about the only thing she has is the four ball. You can see what it, that's a tough backwards cut there. You don't really see the pocket once you're down. Oh, she could make the two. I'm sorry, two off the six. Great. I didn't realize the two was there. I just saw the six. See, I am old. My eyes are not what they used to be. Well, it's worth mentioning we are somewhat removed from the, the table itself due to the kind of the logistics here, the setup logistics, and most of what we're seeing, we're seeing on a monitor like you folks. Every now and then we kind of peek around and see the live table. So much that goes into the setup, not just here in Pool Dog Championship Arena, but just throughout the entire convention space here. You know, most of our team got here almost a week before the event actually started to, to start getting set up. Table lights get hung and tables get brought in, pipe and drape and seating gets constructed. So it's a several-day process. 
This is such a cool looking room, the way yeah. it's set it's up. It's done a great kind of job a with it. Circle or in a, or is it an octagon, sort of? With the seating. Is it an octagon? It seals. One, two. Sort uh, of. Septagon? <laughs> what All right. Hexagon. Okay, thank Hexagon. you. Hexagon. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Wait, did you just Google that? No. Okay. <laughs> you had your phone in your head. So <laughs> You're we're not up to speed on our geometric terms. No, no, never been my thing. Okay, here we go. You can see three, seven, five, four left on the table. Oh boy. Boy, she let that cue ball go. Yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Not sure what she was trying to accomplish there. If she just kind of, she just hit a, a you know poor shot. Sometimes that actually happens, and everybody is allowed to do that. Or if she was trying to do go all the way up for the seven, perhaps. She left herself a tough spot, though. Catherine, you're saying if Manny's Angels win this match, will we live stream the third match? Definitely, we will. We will continue to provide coverage of the final round of the Ladies' 8-Ball Championship until its conclusion, so don't worry. We're not going anywhere. We want to see this play out every bit as much as you folks. Nice shot, avoiding the scratch there. She drew that in. That was a great shot by Jackie. Under the pressure there, too. Dina's been coming on really strong. Jackie got out of line and she fixed it, but she still has work to do. The seven ball is obviously makeable on the side, but she's got the wrong angle to get up for the three ball. It'll be interesting to see if she has the angle where she can go ahead and bump into the three, but she can definitely not follow it up, I don't think. So if she does, she'll end up on the wrong side of the three. Maybe she could just slow roll it, lengthen the angle a little bit. Now, you see what I mean? It's going the wrong way. Oh, she could. Okay, very, very good. Very well played. <laughs> Just enough to bump it. Very nice. This match has been an absolute battle. I mean, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really impressed with both of them. Just how they're handling themselves. They've had some rough moments in this match but i really like their their attitude you, you can so kind of see how a player goes down a little bit and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden they pick themselves up and then they miss a shot and you see them almost disappear right for a while and the other person gets pumped up and you just gotta know that that's the match that's the game <laughs> comes and goes ebbs and flows it's kind of like the video poker machines i've been playing out here ebbs and flows more flows than ebbs, mm. unfortunately. All right, there's the Chicks Ahoy pocket marker right there. And this will bring Kathy to the hill. Pockets the eight in the side. Jackie now leading by a score of Four to two, she is on the hill. And I she has secured at least a point for yeah, her team, absolutely. which is significant. That would make it guarantee them four points at this point. Yep. You know, one thing I like is that more so than ever, we do see that quite a bit, but this year for this particular match, the, the audience, kind of like a funeral, I don't want to, put it that way but right. really sit, they're sitting behind their play, their teams right so at that win right there that was like this everybody over here from uh, the crowd went wild on the, crowd the, went on right the left on side left of the room and the last time the whole the, the right jersey side, of the side room, went, yeah. yeah it's kind of fun yeah it's like going to a neutral site football game yeah. kind of thing Another solid break. Impressive breaks by these ladies today. But 
Does not get anything to no, drop. Pretty amazing. That'll bring Dina to the table. I told you before the broadcast started, I'm exciting. I'm going to a wedding on Thursday. Yeah. Jen and Andy, who met during league night about I getting don't know, married nine out here. Eight, nine years ago, they're getting nice. married out here on nice. Thursday. So. You know what? I hear, heard a rumor, and I guess we'll find out tonight at the pool party, but there might be some folks getting married at the pool party. Oh, that's another fun thing. Now, that's just what I heard. But, you know, usually, you know, when, I hear, talk. usually when I hear things, it's usually right, so... Uh, anyway, true? we'll we'll see what happens. No, that's what that's the rumor. A couple people getting married tonight. Of course, you know one of the great things about APA is is the relationships, right, that develop. Yeah. And so many times we see for players that that make it out here. You know, they met in APA, they fell in love, you know, through the league, and and you know a lot of times they want to tie the knot when they get out here. To, yeah, and we love those stories. So congratulations to uh, to your players that are getting married, and hopefully tonight come out to the pool party. See if I'm right. Oh, I'm coming out to the pool party. Are you getting in the pool? Uh, yeah, no. No? No. It gets cold, that pool. It does. Yeah, they, they keep that pool that pretty cool. Yeah, they do. Which I mean, is you good think it's 110 day. degrees out, yeah. it would be warmer, but that pool stays pretty cool. So That party is time. fun, though. You know what's interesting about the party, too, Ava, is, is so so traditionally the party was held last night on, a sa on this first Saturday. Mm -hmm. And, man, had we had that party last night, that would have been a bad situation because oh, with a storm. we had that storm Sandstorm. roll through. I mean, they literally had, like, umbrellas and things that flew over into the valet area, which is down a level. Was so they crazy, went, they huh? went out of the pool. They said, like, 70-mile-an-hour wind. So, you know, as fate would have it, we're having the party tonight, and the weather should be great. So come on out. That'll Always a good time. Always a good time. Pool of Palooza. All right, here we go. And she has one major quest, and that is that 6-3, which shouldn't be a problem. If you play position like that, she got on the 2. She would love to be able to hand pick and get rid of that 5-ball. Because right now with the 2, you can play the 2, 6, 7, the 3 will get out. But I think that's going to be your, your route anyway, is 2, 6, 7 and then go off for the last two s solids. As we mentioned here, Jackie in the blue, who's shooting is seven months pregnant, so she's got uh, the next great APA member playing with her, essentially, right? Uh-oh. Watch out. Right. So who's getting married, then? I don't know. Oh. I don't know their names. I thought you knew I those do not things. know their names. I just heard a rumor that there's a couple that asked if they could get married at the pool party. Okay. So, just what I heard. We'll see. Got to come out. What kind of a dirt dating service, too, huh? Yeah. So many great stories uh, of, of, you know, I mean, APA obviously is kind of revolves around pool, but it's so much more than that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's the relationships. It's the community. I did, uh, we did an interview a couple days ago with a gentleman who, during his, one of their tournaments in New Orleans earlier this year, uh, went into cardiac arrest at the event. Yeah, that's right. You and, uh, me. and, and, you know, they called an ambulance, obviously, but, but the league operators got on the microphone and said, does anybody in here have medical training that can help? And as luck had it, two firefighters who actually happened to, to have taken off that day to play in the tournament, were there, went to this gentleman's aid, resuscitated him, kept him alive that until the so paramedics amazing. got there, and now all three of them are here in Vegas. How so cool I, I had a chance that? to talk to, to all three of them. And that's a story that we're going to bring you guys uh, here in the next month or so. Very cool story. And, uh, you know, so I don't want to I don't want to give away all the details, but, no, uh, but pretty amazing. So great. Pretty amazing. We had a horrible uh, last year's one of our tri-cups. We had a... Uh, same situation happened, um, although the, and we had 
nurses and, and people that were there that could help him, but unfortunately it was too massive. Didn't it. He didn't yeah, make it. And it was shame. and the hardest thing I've had to do I think as a league operator is to play your funeral. No, to to say w we got to continue play. Oh yeah. Because it was the right before gotta, yeah. the world qualifier, and we didn't have a chance to. There was no way. Yeah. That we could because could postpone it unless yeah. we put it on Memorial Day, and then people had plans to go yeah. out of town. Had to, oh, it was awful. Yeah. Awful, awful, awful. Yeah, you know, and we talked a little bit earlier about you know the life of a league operator, and sometimes those are kind of the gut wrenching decisions you got to be able to make, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So while ideally you wouldn't have had to, to continue, there just was no option there. Yeah, so that's, that that's tough. All right. Ball went to the rail. It looked like it was frozen. So when a ball is frozen to the cushion like that, you have to ha make that ball go to a different rail or the cue ball has to hit a rail, which it did. And it was a, it was a good safety. Obviously, Dina does have a shot here on the 11, but it's a test turn. The cue ball being right on the cushion makes it tougher Dina pockets the 11 in the corner Doesn't have much to look at now, though. Looks like she can apparently Dina's got some admirers here on the, the chat. Or Ricardo's. Ricardo's an admirer. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Matt said she's already got a man, though, so. All right, backwards cut here. Just stay down. Trust that you had already aimed when you were standing up and follow through. Yeah. One thing you can't do is adjust when you have, you got to aim when you stand up. Figure out what you want to do first and then look at where you want to hit the ball and get down and just trust it, especially when the balls are close together like that because when you go down to shoot it, you can't actually see where the cue ball is hitting because they're too close together and you just have to trust that you got it right. Of course, a win here by Jackie would clinch the championship for... The team of Chicks Ahoy. Jackie surveying the table here. Yeah, just trying to figure out before she starts. She doesn't even have an offensive shot. She's got no choice, I don't think, but to play a safe here. I mean, she could play, obviously, she could play the one ball on the side, but the cue ball was going away from the trouble balls down there, so she kind of just played a smart shot, improved her position a little bit, especially should she get back to the table. Dina has a shot on the nine thing about Dina though she's been playing pretty solid so Jackie's gonna have to be careful not to give her too many opportunities like this shot right here she makes this and she's liable to run out from there because everything else is pretty pretty open it's a big shot there, there. you go huge huge shot and it just kind of solved everything right there. Now it's just playing smart. 14 goes in the corner. She's got the nine. Just choose a path here that you feel comfortable with. Again, Dina and her teammates from Edison, New Jersey. They are Manny's Angels. They play out of the Chestnut Inn. That's Dina's family's bar that's been there for 77 years. Wow. Wow.
Pockets the 14 in the corner. Dina needs to push this, win this game to push this to a Hill Hill match. Somebody was saying that Dina's boyfriend, if I got this right on, on Facebook, I d just read it real quick, but it's a 7-9. So in other words, a 7. High skill player. Eight ball, nine ball, nine, 9 and 9 ball. And a lot of times you see the thinking pattern of somebody who's up and coming, who's, who's a 5 in this situation, but thinks like a, a 9 mm. because they're with somebody that they, they, they watch him play. If they hang out, they play against right. them. They, especially if he works with her at all, you start thinking, and that all of a sudden helps you understand getting on the correct side of the ball, playing easier patterns to where you have less difficult position shots, left I less difficult shots, because you, you kind of know what you're doing a little bit right. more than and that really makes a difference. So you see that in a lot of couples, a lot of... Uh, and sometimes it's the other way around where she's the player and shows him a little bit and he learns. But, it, I mean, you do see that a lot with couples where they pull each other up. And then you have the other ones that refuse to play together. <laughs> that seems like the perfect segue <laughs> to mention the Jack and Jill Championship, which will oh, be held on... Oh, look at that. On, what a uh, lead in that was. On Wednesday, I believe, is, is when that's scheduled. So That's right. Jack and Jill. You got some Jack and Jillers out here? Yes, we yeah. have Ebony and Ivory. Ebony and Ivory. Jack Star and Jill and Championship. Ash are coming out. Yeah. That'll be Wednesday. Of course, all these times you're seeing listed Pacific time. So if you're not here in Las Vegas, make sure you adjust accordingly. Okay. Wow, she is good at that. That shot is difficult, but it seems to be one of Jackie's favorite shots. That kind of drawing the ball backwards cut like that. One of those shots you normally try to avoid, and Jackie just fires them in like it's nothing. Michelle McCarver, we're hopeful to see you next year, too, and happy to hear you're re recuperating from yeah. your, your treatments. Okay, big shot here. She drift the cue ball up for a perfect position. Mm. No, she missed it. Did you see how fast you couldn't see it on on, on our live feed? But man, she just Dina just jumped out of that seat. She knew that this was it. This mm -hmm. was either over, not just her match, but the entire team match was over more or less if Jackie makes that three ball on the side. You could see she got perfect position on the next one. And Dina knows she st still has some life right here. Nine ball side pocket. Only thing you don't want to do, you want to try to avoid going into the 10 or the 3. If you can go between that, that would be great. Don't risk missing the ball to do it, but you never know what's going to happen when you just glance into a ball. It's usually never good. All right. That'll work. Drops That'll the work. nine in the side. Well, lots of folks rooting on. Who are you guys rooting for? Are you rooting for Dina? Are you rooting for Jackie? I'm seeing them both ways. Just hop on the comments. Tell us who you're rooting for. Sorry, Chuck. I'm not going to give you any insight on that ain't it. I have to live with these people when I get back. <laughs> 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 now they're good guys. You'll have fun playing them, I think. Oh, they wanted some insight on there. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> that's where they played the first round. Watch out. Uh-oh. She moved the 10. Inadvertently. So her... 10 needs to be put be back where it, it was. There we go. A lot of people think that it's a choice, but it's not. You need to try to put it back where it's close to as possible where it was. All right, Dina. She's got a chance to tie this up. I'm just looking about 50-50 on the commenters as to who they're rooting for, so that's a good thing. That's kind of this room, I like too. That. Yeah, it is. This room is pretty much 50-50. It is packed house right now. I don't really see yeah, not a much seat open available anywhere. Of course, we mentioned with the, the biggest of the events, the 8-Ball World Championship starting tomorrow. A lot of those players arriving today and migrating down towards the tournament area and checking out the action. A lot of the ladies' teams like to stick around and 
see how things play out. So really nice crowds turned out here. Dina pockets the eight in the corner, and we have a Hill Hill match, folks. Okay, got some people that rooting one way or another, and some just wanted to go to the wire. That yep. falls in the in the Jason category. <laughs> <laughs> Third match, baby. Yeah. All right, we'll see. Hill Hill. Each of these players needing just one game to secure this match. I believe Dina just took a break. take a little break. break. Yeah. While she takes a break, we're going to take a quick break. We'll hear a word from our sponsors at Pool Dog. Tired of the same old, same old when you're buying billiard supplies? Come shop with the big dogs at PoolDog.com. You want pool cues? We've got over 700. Balls, cases, accessories, no problem. Want help with your game? How does hundreds of free training articles sound? Want to shop offline? We'll mail you a free catalog. Hit us up online, PoolDog.com, or call 866-843-3294. Each year, thousands of people from all walks of life head to Las Vegas, chasing a dream. Pocket the eight ball, avoids wow. the scratch. What a match. What a match. <laughs> what a comeback. <laughs> what begins as a hobby on a pool table in their local bar or pool room evolves through hard work, dedication, and even luck. There it goes again. Oh, oh my God. Wow. wow. Into something bigger, something greater than anything they could have ever imagined. I've got a 14-year-old boy at home that we play a lot in my garage, and because of that, he got to see me win this thing, and that's huge for me and him. Few ever envisioned playing on a stage of this magnitude, but once they step forth into a sea of pool tables, as far as the eye can see... 317 tables at this year's event. We like to call it pool playing heaven. The dream has been realized, and the competition begins for nearly 10 days as they live this dream, and for a select few who manage to persevere, they return home champions. Art competition, part experience of a lifetime. The APA World Pool Championships has it all and more. So take a moment to let yourself dream. You never know where it might take you. Legendary striking Viking, Ava Matai Lawrence. You see how I'm going with a different introduction each round for you. Yeah. My comedic sidekick here. And I'm joined by my good friend, 
the striking Viking. Grandmother had passed away, and the rest of the family said, you gotta go. You gotta go play for Grandma, and boy, she's had quite a run for Grandma. Uh, and she, I talked to her after the semifinal a little bit. She said, I just said, I, I, I don't think I've ever played that well. Shane Van Boning. I'm really gonna have to come up with you know a few words that we really need to turn ourselves to be really hungry and um welcome back folks to Pool Dog Championship Arena here at the Westgate Resort and Casino in Las Vegas where we have Live coverage of the Ladies 8-Ball Championship. We are in our second match, which is essentially tied. It is a hill-hill match. Both these players needing just one game to secure this second match. At the table is Dina Balka of the team of Manny's Angels from Edison, New Jersey. They currently trail... The team of Chicks Ahoy, and you can see Jackie Catlett at the table now. If Jackie wins this final game, she will secure not only the match win for herself, but the overall victory for her team. They will clinch the championship. So, big game here, folks. is the first of six championships that we will be bringing you from here at the Westgate. Of course, tomorrow we will have final round coverage of the Nine Ball World Championships. That'll be 3 p.m. Pacific time. Just make sure you note that if you're tuning in from the, the East Coast or the Midwest. Just note that time difference. For the folks that are fortunate enough to be out here in Las Vegas with us, don't forget to join us tonight for the pool party here at the Westgate. Jackie pockets that four ball on the side. Again, this is a hill-hill race or a hill-hill match. Each player just needing one final game. Scott, yes, all the finals here in the World Championships will be live streamed. Jackie pockets the two in the corner. What Table do you think here, Ava? Good. Yeah. Table looks good. Six ball is kind of the tricky one here. She can hold the cue ball here. She makes the seven, kind of put a little bit of low left on the cue ball to come back and shoot the five in the same corner. But you can see where that six is. Five to the six is going to be tricky, especially since the... 11 and 15 are blocking the other side of the pocket table. Oh, boy. Misses that seven ball in the corner. That happens a lot. When you worry, you know something tough is coming up. You're kind of yeah. too focused on that as opposed Looking to the ahead, shot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And I saw a question before. Excuse me. I saw a question before about why the women don't uh, play five matches, the ladies, like eight ball or, or nine ball. We used to do that, but... There's so many smaller league areas in the country and in Japan and in Canada that don't have enough to field the whole division of right. eight players or even five. Right. So you kind of split it up, and that's when it went to more of an alternate format. So it's um, five-man teams, three play instead of eight person teams with five playing right so. more similar to like a masters kind of right. uh, again it's it's one of the showdown series events 
those events being the Masters, the Ladies' 8-Ball, the Jack and Jill event. Exactly. Of course, in April, we've got the, the doubles events and the wheelchair events. But, but it events, really so. was because, and, and, you know, not because the, the women don't play as well or there's not as many oh, women. Oh, sure, just that definitely to not. To be able to, to locally make, right. a, make it work. Division. Yeah. And it's really worked. And it's really taken off how many of, uh, you know, how big the, the uh, women's side has gotten. Yeah. So Very similar to, to Masters. You know, you only mm -hmm. have so many higher skilled players in an area and you know, to try to, to make that an you know eight person team in, in five matches can be exactly. difficult to to put that many together. So, all right, back to this mess that Dina is faced with right now. Open shot here, obviously. You can see, fifteen. Uh, excuse me, the thirteen is by the side pocket. That shouldn't be a problem. The nine ball is no problem. The 10 and 14 are obviously the issues on the other side of the table for clean run out. She's going to have to do some work there. Again, Dina needs to Good win this game there. to push this to a third match. Nice stroke. That's a ni bit of a nine ball stroke there, getting around the ball. That was a good shot. She plays, you can tell, with a super thin shaft. Could you look yeah. at the tip, how thin it is? Yeah. That's one, one of the things that you, you lose when you have a thin tip like that. You lose some accuracy, but you gain in spin. So drawing the ball with a thinner tip like that, um, it's, it's much easier. than a, So the thicker the tip, yeah. the more accurate your shot making. It's the first making. time I've noticed that, but yeah, you're right. Is yeah. it, it's almost like, what is that? Is that a snooker cues that use the real thin? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had not noticed that until you mentioned it, but you're absolutely yeah. right. Okay, 11 in the side. She wants to come across and pretty much take the place of the one ball if she could. Center tape. Oh, mm. no. She didn't. She was not happy about that, and the shot here on the seven available for Jackie. What a battle this has been. I mean, I know, I, I know we've said it before, but here we are, Hill Hill, and it just seems like every turn at the table is I know it's up here, so the challenging. Uphill battle. Yeah, but the balls have been breaking up in a strange kind of formation every time. Yeah. It hasn't been a really uneasy. And you look at the two players that don't like to take risks, right? Like stupid smart, risks. Smart, yeah. You're playing smart, smart players. So they're, they're neither one of them are afraid of going into a safety battle. Well, I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a timeout, hasn't it? I haven't seen the, the uh, any coaches in the last couple games. Well, it kind of makes sense because, I mean, I don't think there's anybody on Jackie's team that feels they can tell Jackie kind sure. of, you know what I mean? Jackie is the six. She is yeah. kind of the, but it doesn't mean that, that other fours or threes haven't gone up before and discussed a shot. Sure. I know uh, Dina, there's a couple of, uh, let's play the safety there. All right, good shot. Smart, smart shot. She did not like the seven ball shot and trying to get around the table and get perfect position and all that. So she played a really good shot there. But I noticed that um, Irene has been taking a timeout a couple of times with Dina, and they're both skill level five. So right. there's some good discussion between the two of them, and, you know, if they think alike to say, you know, what do we do here? So Yeah, and I'm guessing if we go to a third match, we will see Irene from Manny's Angels. That's just a guess, but... And that'll still keep them within skill level 13. Yeah, and you're probably going to see Kathy from uh, 
the team captain for mm -hmm. Chicks Ahoy if, the, if we go to a third match. So we'll see. I mean, obviously that could change, but just looking at the players available and the numbers and kind of the patterns that they've played throughout the tournament, that would be who, would I, who I would assume we'd see next here. So we'll see. Got to get there first, though. Dina's got to get her team to that third match by winning this game. Well, I'll tell you what. Now she got the five ball. That, you know, she was just in a tough position there. It was it was such a strange little situation. I didn't want to try to guess what she was going to do there. The only thing you can do when it gets to that point, if you can't tie something up to make it, your, your, you know, your opponent miserable, at least try to leave the cue ball on the rail somewhere if you can. That always makes the shot for your, you know, much more difficult if your cue ball is on the rail. Yeah. What a trooper Jackie is, too. I mean, we've talked about the fact she's seven months pregnant, and this match has gone on now for, I didn't see what time it started, but oh, we wow. got through, th yeah. through that first match, yeah, almost two hours now, so two, two hour physically battle. it's just got to be such a challenge for her. All right, this is, she's looking, she's playing this perfectly, which <coughs> means seven, six, or, or whatever that she just made, and then the six ball stop right there. She'll have the one. Seven and eight. Pockets the six in the corner. What do you think, Ava? I think it looks pretty good. I mean, her only other option would go seven one, but I don't see that being a smart move at all. That ten ball is huge. So if she makes the one ball here and holds it for the seven. You want to go one rail and up for the eight, and you got to make sure you have the correct path or you're going to get stuck behind that ten ball. And when you, you know, there's such an important thing to identify that the potential of problem is there. Yeah. So that you really pay attention to position, but not yep. feel intimidated by them. Okay, here Going we go. After Jacked the up. One. Jacked up. Always makes it tougher. So to draw it back just a m few millimeters, hold it right there. And she made nice it. Shot. It's not over yet. Answer your question, Lance. Yes, if Jackie wins, that's all she wrote. It's interesting the kind of the energy in the room has changed. You can you can tell that this thing is potentially coming close to its conclusion. Folks are mm -hmm. getting a little antsy in the room at this point. Not quite as hushed as it once was. Beautiful. And a tester coming up. She's going to be jacked up over the 14. <laughs> Jackie with a chance to clinch a championship for her team. You know what? Whether she makes this or misses it, this is so fitting for the way this match has been going. Absolutely. Nothing easy. Jackie Catlett now on the eight ball with a chance to finish this match off, finish this event off, secure $10,000 for her team. Take a deep breath. Hi, Sonia. I just saw that, that you posted there. Hope to see you in April, Sonia. All right. This is oof. I don't even know if she can reach it, especially now being pregnant. Oh, boy. She can, just barely. Can she get a good stroke on it, though? She got it. Wait. Oh, wow, 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 wow. 
Jackie Catlett, folks. Pockets Gotta the Gotta give eight. it to her. And your ladies eight ball champions from Newport News, Virginia, the team of Chicks Ahoy. Congratulations to them. And congratulations to Manny's Angels, runners up in this year's event. What yeah, a battle, standing huh? Standing battle. Whew. Fantastic. I'm sweating. I know. And that'll do it from here in Good Pool job, Dog ladies. Arena for today. Frank's going to, we got to take him out to the bathroom and. <laughs> whew, what yeah, a match. You take him what a match. You what take a match. Him. So, again, congratulations to the, lady from Chicks, the ladies from Chicks Ahoy. Uh, Newport News, Virginia, your ladies' eight ball champions, folks. Thank you for joining us. We will be back with you tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific time, where we will have final round coverage of the nine ball world championships. So Absolutely. come back and see us tomorrow. We'll just say goodbye for just a little bit. <laughs>